as the Henrico County Honor Guard presents our nation's colors. Ladies and gentlemen, this week, NASCAR lost one of its longest standing voices and more importantly, a great friend with the passing of Fox Sports broadcaster Steve Burns. Throughout his 30 plus years covering the sport, Steve earned the respect and admiration of the entire NASCAR community. Steve was a remarkable person, served as an inspiration to many during his courageous battle against cancer, and he will be missed. Our thoughts and prayers go out to Steve's wife, Karen, son Bryson, as well as all his family, friends, and colleagues. We ask that you please remain standing and join us in a moment of silence as we remember Steve Burns. Thank you. And now, please welcome Reverend Tom Potter from Langley, Virginia, as he offers today's invocation. Dear Lord, as we continue now to honor this great, remarkable man, I pray for his family. I pray that they might sense our love and our support, and they might be comforted and encouraged from above. Lord, I want to thank you for this most great speedway here. Lord, and all the extra hard work that they put into this race tonight. We appreciate all these race drivers, the team and families, and their commitment to this sport. May this be a safe race. Lord, I want to thank you for these race fans. I thank you for their determination, their patriotic spirit, and their belief in you. We especially thank you for our military, the sacrifice that they and their families make for freedom. We pray for our wounded warriors. A special thanks goes up for our law enforcement personnel who fight a war that never ends, the war against crime. Bring them safely home to their families. Bless this race today, and God bless America. In Jesus' name, shalom and amen. Here today to honor America with the playing of our national anthem, please welcome the soldiers of the Fort Lee 392nd Army Band. Drivers, fans, family anxious to race, and the race straight ahead, 400 laps, 300 miles. Our friend and colleague Steve Burns will always be remembered. Our thoughts remain with friends, family, and those in the NASCAR community.
Thank goodness no more rain here in Richmond. We expect plenty of three wide racing today. There was racing here Friday night in the Xfinity Series. There's Denny Hamlet who's starting on the front row today. The Virginia native, he dominated, bouncing back from that sore neck that didn't allow him to finish the rain-ravaged race last week in Bristol. He won easily, but earlier in this race, there was a, a fire in the pits that injured three crew members. Gas man Josh Whitman released from the hospital last night, part of Brendan Gaughan's team. Tire changer Anthony O'Brien remains under a, the physician's care, and Clifford Turner from Eric McClure's crew was also treated and released from the hospital as well. We certainly hope they're okay. Those pit crew members and safety crews do a great job uh, on the tracks no matter what day it is. But today's race, Michael Walter, Chris Myers, nice to have you with us. Joey Logano is on the pole. He's won a race this year along with Hamlin. There are two drivers who have punched their ticket to the chase, so 10 spots remain, and we'll see drivers that haven't won yet scrambling right away to try and get that W. And scramble's what it's going to be, Chris. We talked to Kevin Harvick right here last night, and he said, we didn't think we'd race tonight. We think we're going to race tomorrow. So they adjusted their car likewise. This track will be very interesting early in the race. It's clean, a lot of grip, meaning that the front tires are really going to stick. Maybe the back ones slide around. So let's talk about Jimmy Johnson, who's won twice this year, but he's also won the last two times that they had a postponement here at Richmond. He's starting back of the pack. Last week, he worked his way back up to finish second. Are you sure he finished yes, second? Yes, it was amazing. He started in the back. He was in two crashes and winds up finishing second. That's the kind of determination. That's the kind of adversity you could be facing today with the conditions that these drivers are facing. Casey Kane starts 40th, 7th in points, but still looking for that first win. We'll keep an eye on him. Fast Chevrolet there, too. Okay. Watch Let's for him. Head back trackside. It was going to be a night race. Now it's a day race with cool temperatures, but they're ready to hear those famous words. Race fans, it's time for the most famous words in motorsports. Please welcome today's Grand Marshal, loyal Toyota owner and VIP customer of Mechanicsville Toyota, Eric Wincoop. Drivers, start your engines. Always appreciate a loyal customer, loyal viewers, and loyal broadcasters. And that's what they are up in the booth as they always call the races for you on Fox. Daryl Waltrip, Larry McReynolds, Mike Joy. Hope you guys are having a good Sunday, Mike. Well, thank you, Chris. You know, back in the day, Richmond was the race right after Daytona because promoter Paul Sawyer wanted to catch all the snowbirds heading back from Daytona Beach. They ran this race on Sunday. They'd started an hour after church, and that's just what we'll do today. But Earlier in the week, the track took on all kinds of rubber. There was rubber debris. There was a real good groove of rubber. And now, with last night's rain, Larry, it's all gone. Well, it, we call it a green track, and we love NASCAR's green initiative, but drivers do not like a track that does not have rubber, neither do the Goodyear tires. But the good thing about it, you heard Michael Waltrip saying this, all of the practice these drivers and teams had was in the day on Friday, and I think there was a lot of anticipation. The forecast had been in the, the newspapers and all all week long about yesterday, so I think we all felt like we would be racing at night. I just think there'll have to be a lot of patience and a lot of trying of these patients until this track gets his rubber back down. All right, Daryl. So what are your concerns about the early laps here? I'm not even going to start. What? I'm a nervous wreck. I, I, I listen to Michael. I listen to you. I listen to Larry. I, I don't know what to expect. When I go off in the first turn, this car is not going to be the same car I got out of Friday. And the track's not going to be the same track that I ran on Friday. And so everything is different. I'm going to be a little edgy for the first couple of laps to see what I've got. i got to be patient with this car. Remember what happened here on the start last year? I got to be sure that that doesn't happen to me this year. All right, pole sitter Kyle Larson got turned around in the very first corner. The skies cried all night long in Richmond here, but now it's a new day and we're ready to race and bring you NASCAR on Fox.
Welcome to the Toyota Owners 400 from Richmond International Raceway. I'm Ed Laukas with Toyota. Three years ago, we partnered with the Raceway to salute our most valuable asset, our Toyota Owners, by creating the Toyota Owners 400. In addition to saluting Toyota Owners, we're proud to create NASCAR history at this race with the Toyota Mirai serving as NASCAR's first ever hydrogen-fueled pace car. And finally, on behalf of our Toyota dealers, and team members, we'd like to send our thoughts and prayers to the family of Steve Burns, an inspiration to us all. We hope you enjoy the Toyota Owners 400. Thank you, Ed. There is the pace car that Ed spoke of, hydrogen fuel, zero emissions, just water vapor. Here's the Geico starting grid for today's race. Joey Logano's third pull of the season. He leads all drivers. Denny Hamlin led all but two laps here on Friday. Kurt Busch, the 2005 winner, and A.J. Allmendinger, best start of the season. Kevin Harvick, three-time Richmond winner. Martin Truex Jr., whose top 10 streak ended last week. Maybe he'll start a new one. Brad Keselowski, Matt Kenseth. Brad won from the pole here last September. And Matt broke that winless streak last week. Jamie McMurray, top 10 start in the last three races. And David Reagan, his best start at Richmond. Jeff Gordon, runner-up for both races here last year. And Kyle Larson, seventh last week, his best of the season. Tony Stewart got his first Sprint Cup win here. Brett Moffitt's here for the first time. Paul Menard just won top 10 here. That was in fall of 13. Chase Elliott makes his second career start in the Sprint Cup Series. Past Richmond winners, Clint Boyer and Carl Edwards in the ninth row. And rounding out the top 20, Landon Castle, who made the second round of qualifying both the last two weeks. And Austin Dillon got his first top 10 of the season last week. Let's talk to uh, Danica, who has just had a great run on the short tracks. Danica Patrick at DW, got a copy? Sir, copy. Well, you've got uh, two top 10 finishes on the short tracks. You're starting about mid-pack. With all the rain and uh, all that stuff that's happened over the last uh, day, how do you feel about the start of this race? Well, I was thinking about, you know, how it's going to change, and I don't think there was a huge big balance shift between the beginning of practice till the end of practice. So, you know, I think if your car is good, your car is good. It's super important here to roll the center so you don't abuse the back tires trying to get off the corner and get get the push out of it. So um, that's what we'll be, I'll be focusing on today and having a good long run car because we get a lot of those here. All right, well, good luck. Uh, third best finish on short tracks. You're chase eligible. Bring it to the house. Right, copy that, thank you. Danica will start 21st. Let's go to Pit Road, Matt Yoakum. Mike, the driver who benefited most from the rain out to Sunday was Kevin Harvick. Earlier this week, he battled the flu. While on his visit to the White House, he even had to take a nap at one point. Harvick told me the extra night's rest puts him back at 110% stellar race car. He loves his chances for a fourth Richmond win. Jamie Little? Well, Matt, last time we raced here, Brad Kozlowski dominated, started on the pole, led 383 laps to win his first race at Richmond. His crew chief, Paul Wolf, told me that although the rules package is different and they tried different setups, nothing was as solid as what they raced here in the fall. Watch for the two at Kozlowski to be a threat once again. Chris Neville? Well, Jimmy Johnson was fourth quick in practice on Friday, but in qualifying, he says he doesn't know what happened to the car. He just had no grip. Now, he did come from the back to win Atlanta, but he said today is going to be completely different. He's going to have to be ultra aggressive because it's so easy to lose time and traffic and potentially go down a lap to the leader before the competition caution. Mike. Thanks, Chris. Today's race will be 400 laps around the three quarter mile oval of Richmond International Raceway 40 down pit road. Sunoco race fuel every 110 to 120 laps and a competition caution at lap 50 after inspection yesterday before they called the race Andy Petrie our rules analyst they impounded the cars then what yeah the rules state Mike that they cannot make adjustments on those cars when they're impounded as they were last night for the race so they were able to just warm up the engines refuel the cars adjust the tape and the air pressure and that's all they can do to change these cars to start this day race thanks Andy we are ready to go green in Richmond yes sir it's a exciting day a lot of fans came out for the race today thanks for being here going to be exciting. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing, drivers. For all that concern, Daryl, good clean start. Yeah, so far so good. Uh, 
coming around to complete lap one. A lot of congestion back mid-pack, but it uh, looks like it's sorting itself out pretty well here. What we've been seeing all week, though, the bottom line is the preferred groove, and Kurt Busch at 41 was doing everything he could to keep Denny Hamlin in the 11 on the outside. Kurt falls into second place. Hamlin third, Almendinger fourth. Then Harvick, Truex, Keselowski, the first side-by-side -side battle is Matt Kenseth and Jamie McMurray for eighth. I think one of the things we want to watch here early is can anybody make that outside work? Can you make passes on the outside? Because if you can, you got it made because there's nobody trying it right now. Jeff Gordon's going to try into turn three against Matt Kenseth. That's back at ninth place. Right behind him, Kyle Larson also on the outside. Still a good bit of double wide from there on back. Yeah, I, th I think you got to get up on that outside right now when everybody's trying to fight for the bottom the way they are and see if you can make some passes. It hasn't looked good. And right now, Matt Kentz is able to hold off Jeff Gordon as he tried to pass on the outside. Didn't work for Gordon, but Kyle Larson is still trying it against David Reagan there. That's for 11th. Larson 42 on the outside. Oh, Danica turned around by Casey Mears. Dale Earnhardt gets into the back of her, but everybody's able to continue. Now that happened because two cars put Danica in the middle three wide. She had to get out of the throttle and then got tagged. If you, if you ever question her ability to drive a car and her car control, watch this. Bam, Casey Mears right into the side of her. Look at that car, almost 90 degrees, saves it, carries on. Let's look from let's look from Ryan Newman's view. On exit. Wow. Going ahead of it. Got a spin behind you. Still green. Still green. Outside 51. Go low. Go low. Go low. Get up and across to the one outside. Go high. Go high. Clear to the wall. Clear to the wall. Clear. So we stay under green, Jamie. And the only thing Danica Patrick said was, "I have smoke in the car." But right now they're just going to stay out and see if that was just from the tires. In the aftermath, it stacked the back of the field up so bad, including drivers like Greg Biffle, Dale Earnhardt Jr. The back of the field now is a half a lap down to leader Joey Logano after seven laps. Yeah, I don't see any tire rub, so I think that smoke was probably from just the car getting loose, smoking the tires. I don't see any tire rub on the 10 car. Kevin Harvick to the outside of Denny Hamlin, Martin Truex, pulls through as well. That drops Hamlin two spots. It just appears Denny Hamlin in the 11, back to what we talked about before the green flag. I just don't think Denny Hamlin's 11 car is like in a racetrack that does not have rubber on it right now. No, and I think that two car, you think about the dominance of it here last fall, 383 laps that car led. He did the tire test up here. I expect that car to be good on the long run, particularly. But, I mean, Daryl, I am starting to see more and more drivers try to work that second groove in. If we ever get some rubber down, then we'll have two grooves of racing. We normally see that here, Larry. I, I mean, normally we see the groove in three and four, particularly way up near the wall. So uh, I think that will happen. Just got to get some rubber down. Tony Stewart went by Chase Elliott in the 25, making his second career start. Gave him a little nudge in the door, and now Clint Boyer was side-by-side -side with Elliott a lap ago and now falls in line. I just think bringing Chase Elliott to a track like Richmond where he has some races under his belt, some good races, three top fives in the Xfinity Series versus a place like Martinsville that he had little to no experience where he made his first start. Feel good. I think, I think Chase will get a top 15 today when it all shakes out. I really do. And right behind them, Landon Castle, Carl Edwards. And meanwhile, at seventh place, teammates, Kenseth and Hamlin. Jeff Gordon looking in. If Denny Hamlin just continues to slide back, I think he'll definitely be one of those drivers that will be looking, especially for that competition caution we spoke about at lap 50. Yeah, and, and it's not that unusual for a car to be way, way off at the start of a race when the track is like this is, with no rubber on it. Got a nice battle here for third with Kevin Harvick and A.J. Allmendinger. Allmendinger, another guy that did the tire test up here, qualified well, paid off for him. So Joey Logano has led every one of 13 laps so far from Kurt Busch, Kevin Harvick, A.J. Allmendinger, and Martin Truex Jr.
Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything they learn making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, official tire of NASCAR, showing you Joey Logano's lead over Kurt Busch. Six tenths of a second as Logano, just 20 laps into this race, begins to get into race traffic. Yeah, and that's slowing him down just a little bit here, and that's allowing, as you can see, Kurt Busch has closed a bunch because of uh, Logano trying to get by the 33 car of uh, Alex Kennedy there. So Kurt Busch four tenths back now. Kevin Harvick another second back in third, Matt. Mike, he's climbed from fifth up to third, and as expected, Harvick said the car is on the tight side this early run. Now Rodney Childers expected that, and he said the track should really take rubber when they get to the competition caution around lap 50. Casey Mears, you see a good bit of damage on the right front. That came when Danica Patrick had to lift, and Mears got into her, almost turning her around. Yeah, you can see right here that Danica's kind of caught in the middle there. Casey got a nice run on the bottom and just drives right into the side of Danica, and lucky that everybody escaped that. Dale Jr. did a nice job. Well, Casey Mears talked about it on the radio. The hell was that? Crank about the right front fender. Can't come down on him. Might have to pull a little bit, but no smoke. That happened. I got pretty tight. Matt? Mike, they've had their spotter keeping an eye on that right front. You can see the damage from about the 11 to 2 o'clock position above that right front. Keeping an eye out for a fender rub at this juncture. Good news, no rub. A little bit of damage on uh, Danica's car there. The door at the right rear. I don't think it should become a big surprise that Jimmy Johnson in that 48 Casey Kane in the five. Now I know they're back in 22nd and 24th, but remember they started 36th and 40th. So they've been making their way through the field, picking off almost a driver a lap. But Larry, right now they're a little over, a little bit over a half lap down to the leader right now. And in between them is this orange car, the number 19 Toyota of Carl Edwards. Chris? Yeah, Mike, we see Jimmy Johnson and Casey Kane moving forward. Carl Edwards moving backwards, sick position from the start. He's saying that car's so tight, just won't turn in the center of the corner. He says it almost feels like he has a right front flat. The car is so bad. Well, that just seems to be the nature of this green racetrack with no rubber that the, the front wheels are not gripping. It's going to be interesting, guys, to watch these cars that are fading early, like Carl Edwards, like Denny Hamlin, some guys that don't have the setup right now, how that could play into their cars later in the race. This track is going to change tremendously with all the rubber that goes down. These guys could be a couple to watch later on going the other direction instead of fading back. Yeah, that's kind of normal. Comers and goers on a green track. One of those goers is Denny Hamlin, Jamie. Well, he started this race second, and at the end of happy hour yesterday, final practice, he said, I can win with this car because of how good it is. The whole corner is connected. Well, so far in this race, that's not the same car he had. He said he just cannot roll the center at all, can't get off the corner. So watch for some adjustments to Denny Hamlin's car on lap 50. And I'm sure he'd love to just have a car 75% as good as that Xfinity Series car he had Friday night, led all but two laps from the pole. Well, remember now, we have a new tire here. We have what they call the multi-zone tire, inside a little harder than the outside, kind of a combination of the two tires they ran here last year. Uh, nobody really knows for sure how much give up that tire is going to have in it and how, what kind of changes you're going to have to make the car to accommodate that tire. So that's another factor that these guys are dealing with. But you talk about give up, Daryl. We've run 30 laps, and already the pace has fallen off over a second and a half from where we started. And there's been a bit of uh, bumping and grinding. Jimmy Johnson may have some damage as he worked his way up from 36th to 22nd, Chris. That's right, Mike. Chad Canals just telling Jimmy Johnson on the radio, we've got some damage on the nose of the car as you're working your way through traffic, and we're definitely going to have to deal with that on the first pit stop. So plan on losing some spots down here in pit lane because we've got to fix the nose. All right, 31 laps complete, all of them green. Joey Logano has led them all. 19 more laps. NASCAR will throw that competition caution for everyone to check tire wear and refuel.
Free Toyota Owners 400 on Fox is sponsored by Toyota. Let's go places. Joey Logano still leading on Safe Kids Day. Nationwide is the presenting sponsor of this national event to celebrate kids, prevent injuries, and save lives. Safe Kids Worldwide and Nationwide working together to reduce childhood injuries and protect what matters most, our children. Visit MakeSafeHappen.com for home safety tips and to find a safety event in your community. Three cars under a blanket for the lead. Now that's short track racing for you. Well, because leader Joy Logano in the 22 has been in traffic, actually a fourth driver has joined up. Martin Trex Jr. in the 78 right behind Kevin Harvick. You see Martin in the black car there. <laughs> and race I'm watching is right in front of the leaders. Two cars that are trying to keep them going a lap down, but they're, they're going to wreck each other in the process as the 6 and the 10. They have been all over just bang, hammering on each other. But uh, yeah, Danica, just, has, Danica has better mid-corner speed, but she was not getting off turn two well enough to make the pass. This time Trevor Bain gives her room on the inside. As the leaders go closer, she can't complete the pass there off four. No, and it, the leaders are getting there in a hurry. Yeah, there's one driver between them and the leader, and that's Cole Witt in that 35 car. Looks like he's about to go a lap down. It's going to be borderline. Can they run another eight laps without getting lapped before that caution? I think Danica is starting to say, look, I got one of us has got to do something here. We're no need both of us getting lapped. And they are eight tenths of a second per lap slower than the leaders. As Harvick goes to work on his teammate for second, and Bain gives a little bump and run to Danica between one and two. Didn't want to be passed that way. Well, she bumped him down here in three and four, and he said, I'll pay you back down here in one and two. Uh, that was almost disastrous. And the leaders are coming. Those two saving grace is that 35 of Cole Witt. That is the buffer and the last car on the lead lap. Kurt Busch gets second place back from his teammate. Six laps to the competition yellow. And let's go back and have a look. What happened in, in down here in three and four, Danica got into the back of Trevor Vane in the six and pushed him up to hill. Trevor comes back down in one and two and pushes Danica up to hill. And now Joey Logano has lapped the 35. And while that happens, Martin Truex comes into the picture side by side for third. Five laps for Bain and Patrick to hold on to be on the lead lap when the competition yellow flies. What about yeah, what about the 78 car though? I, I mean, I know we talk a lot about his crew chief Cole Pern, but they do such a great job with this 78 car, Martin Truex. And there's another one joining this party here, Brad Keselowski in that two car. He's right on the rear bumper of Martin Trex Jr. You're riding with him. Brad started back in the seventh position. Yeah, we've got a five car battle here for the lead right now. And not four behind these guys is the 20 of Matt Kinson, 24 of Jeff Gordon. The front is really tightening up. Trevor Bain is going to have to try to hold up Joey Logano because even if Logano does uh, does get past, Bain would be in the lucky dog position as long as Logano doesn't lap Danica Patrick in the next three laps. And we've got that caution, competition caution coming at lap 50. Every driver will be on pit road for four tires and fuel. And I think this is going to be one of those days where you better be mistake free on pit road. Yeah, but that was the urgency uh, with, with Danica and Trevor Bain and these cars at the back of the field right here. They knew they had a caution coming. You've got to stay on the lead lap to that caution. I think Logano just gave his fellow Ford driver there a little break. But Bain can't hold the bottom, and Logano's going to drive on, and we're one lap away from that caution flag. Some that really need a pit stop. Denny Hamlin, who's dropped all the way back to 14th, for example. Yeah, yeah. A.J. Allmendinger in the 47 that started fourth. He's right in front of Denny Hamlin. You see him right there. And I couldn't, the even, I couldn't even find Carl Edwards on the list. He's down on page two, 27th, 27th way back. Matt Kentz is only Gibbs Toyota right now that's uh, in contention, and he looks pretty good in sixth spot. So next time around, competition yellow. Patrick will stay on the lead lap right behind Stenhouse. Competition cost. Trevor Bain will be the first car one lap down and get the free pass. Joey Logano has led every lap. I think I've heard that before. 
That was last week at Bristol. He led every lap. Uh huh. In the Xfinity series. You don't think he's trying to pitch another no hitter, do you? Well, it's what we used to call stinking up the show. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, he, he ran second to Denny Hamlin the other night when Denny led 248 to 250. He says, "I know what that feels like now." <laughs> yeah, right. <Yeah. laughs> Little damage on the back of Trevor Bain there. France asked me one time, he said, do you like to fish? I said, no, sir, I never go fishing. You stink up my show, we're going to come in and we're going to talk about fishing. There's the green flag at the head end of Pit Road, signifying Pit Road is open, and here come all the lead lap cars. Chris. Well, Kurt Busch made some changes to that car prior to the race to anticipate a green racetrack. He's happy with those changes, saying right now that car just a little bit loose. Jamie. And Brad Kozlowski and the two made that pass on Truex on the outside car working well as he moved up the track. But he is a little loose in and off and it got worse as he went on a four tire stop here. He already adjusted the track bar and he'll fill him up. Matt up to second was Kevin Harvick. He needs more help drive off the corner. Air pressure changed to help get more grip. Meanwhile, Joey Logano was holding on to the lead. He needed more help drive off as well. An air pressure change in wedge. He lost the front first. Then he started losing the back of the car during that run, Mike. So a lot of needed adjustments as Joey Logano retains the lead on this first caution flag of the day, the NASCAR competition yellow. The Toyota Owners 400 on Fox is sponsored by Sprint. Bring in your Verizon or AT&T bill and we'll cut your rate plan in half. By Coca-Cola, the official soft drink of NASCAR. Coca-Cola, open happiness. And by Advance Auto Parts, the brand for guys who love getting under the hood. On pit stops, Jamie McMurray had to make a second stop to retighten the left rear wheel, dropping from 8th to 31st. Dale Earnhardt Jr. had an issue in his pit box. We'll show you in a minute as we get ready for the restart. Joey Logano's led every lap as he pulls Kurt Busch down the front straightaway. Kurt's going to venture up on that outside down there in the middle of one and two. 
didn't gain but didn't lose. So he, that was uh, that's encouraging. He got a great run through there, Daryl, and was able to maintain that second spot. And here comes Keselowski in that number two, working the outside of Truex in the 78. 31 cars on the lead lap. Truex, black Chevrolet on the inside of the black and yellow Ford of Keselowski. We see uh, Keselowski trying that outside. A lot of speed if you can get it hooked up up off the corner, get a nice shot, shot down the straightaway, but uh, lose it in the middle of the turn. Hey guys, don't you think it's interesting? Last week at Bristol, everybody wanted to be on the top. We're at a short track again. Now everybody wants to be on the bottom. Can't they make up their mind? <laughs> Good point, Michael. Yeah, I think that'll. I think eventually there'll be a second group, Mike. I think that rubber has to get down a little bit more up there, but I think eventually we'll have side by side. 13th is Dale Earnhardt Jr. 12th is Denny Hamlin in the 11. Earnhardt stops deep in his box, uh, or no, he's centered in his box. Here comes Hamlin hey. and knocks the tire right out of the carrier's hand for he Dale Jr. The, he knocked the sticker off of that tire. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I saw that mark in the AT box on the ground. Flip me out somehow or another. I'm a little fused. Doing a great job on the racetrack there. We'll get it fixed up in here. You guys did a good job of recovering in there. It's almost like these drivers are still trying to adapt that you can't drive through a bunch of pit boxes getting into your pit box. It, it's kind of throwing them off a little bit still. It's so tempting. I mean, you know, you get over there, you get you can get lined up, get into your pit box nice and straight. It's real tempting to do that. Clint Boyer has gained a spot, moved past Brad Keselowski to put his Toyota up into seventh. And to me, what this team needs to do, Clint Boyer, Brian Patty, yeah, I'm sure they'd love to go to victory lane. This is a great track for Clint. They just need to close out a solid day, a solid finish. Well, they've had a good weekend already. They qualified better than they did at Martinsville or at Bristol, and the car looks really good. He's running the bottom right on that yellow line. That's where you want to be right now. It's looking pretty racy. With the MWR cars carrying Steve Burns and his son Bryson's picture on the nose as they did last week at Bristol. Because Clint has a couple of wins here in Cup back in 2010, 2012. Kevin Harvick third, Martin Truex fourth. The one car who's uh, dropped a lot, two cars have dropped quite a bit in this run. Brad Keselowski from fourth to eighth, and Kyle Larson from eighth to twelfth. Well, I know why on the two car. The two and the 24 got together down in the middle of one and two, and Brad lost a ton of momentum, and uh, that's cost him a couple of spots. I think he's all right. I think he just lost a little bit of momentum down there when they made a little contact. So Larson has also lost four spots since the restart. Tony Stewart restarted 11th. He's picked up two spots, Matt. Mike, during the test here, Ted, Chad Johnson told me the car was really good on long runs. The temperatures are similar, which are typical. Uh, when they don't come back here, they're not usually the same. Very similar to what we have here today, so they were very hopeful. Stewart said the balance was good the first part of that run. If anything, he adjusted with the track bar. That helped some, but Chad made three different adjustments on their stop. The car's good. Yeah, Tony was one of four drivers to do the Goodyear tire test here. And, Daryl, in the pre-race, you talked about Tony Stewart. I think that sixth-place finish at Bristol was a small little victory for him last week. Confidence. Is he, is, as good as he is and as great as he is, confidence. Excuse me. Pardon me. Out of the way. Coming, coming through. through. Hello. Uh, aren't you a rookie? I see your yellow bumper. Uh, maybe I'll just give you a tap. But Casey I think Kane, biggest mover. I think we knew Casey Kane would work his way to the front. He was fastest in practice the other day. They just had things go amiss in qualifying, started back in the 40th spot. David Reagan, we started 12th. He has now dropped four spots to 16th if Kane completes this pass. Kane's teammate, Jimmy Johnson, he's not going anywhere real fast right now, Larry. He's stuck way back in 21st spot. Chris? 
Well, Mike, you said that five car was fast in practice. He was also a car they didn't know why they didn't have any grip in qualifying. But in the initial run here, he's saying the car has been running tight. It was getting tight over the course of the run. They made a lot of adjustments on that last stop. There's well, there's uh, Casey Mears right together with uh, Danica and Ricky. It was Stenhouse who had to go way wide to avoid those two when they got together coming off turn four. Yeah, I don't think that uh, Casey Mears has forgotten about what happened early in the race there. He's pretty aggressive right now. And, and, and I saw that as a racing incident. I didn't see that as a blame one or the other. That was just one of those bottled up racing deals. But we have seen drivers get uh, quite aggravated with each other here. Matter of fact, I think Marcus Ambrose and Casey may have had a little conversation after the race here last year. Very pointed one. Yep. I thought it was more blunt, but it might have. <laughs> <laughs> That's OK. I guess decide, uh, depends which side you were on. Now, Jamie McMurray, we told you had to restart. Turns out 30th because they came in a second time on that pit stop. And when you have 31 cars on the lead lap, including the free pass car, it's a long way to come back. He has picked up four spots since the restart. But he's over a half lap down to our leader, Joy Logano, which right now, Kurt Busch has been reeling in Joy Logano on that 22. But that's to my point earlier, before that pit stop, I think it's a day that we're going to get these long green runs and you can't afford to make mistakes on pit road. Yeah, this track, uh, as, it, as it starts to rubber up a little bit, you can see the color of it already changing. It was real white when we started. It's starting to get that dark tint to it. Cars are going to change a little bit. Guys that are running up front. I tell you, I think the advantage, if you think about the guys that did the tire test here, they're all running pretty good. I know we mentioned the tire test a number of times, but that's a big advantage if you were one of the cars that got to do it. Joey Logano has led all 75 laps so far. A lot of racing left to go in Richmond.
Sprint will cut your rate plan in half. Bring them your Verizon or AT&T bill and turn in your old phone at a Sprint retail store or at Sprint.com slash half price. Joey Logano has the fastest everything so far today. He has led every one of the 83 laps of this race. Even during caution flag and pit stops. Kurt Busch is four tenths of a second behind. Kevin Harvick one second back. Martin Truex, Matt Kenseth are the fast five. Let's take a look back about 24th place oh, here. These guys right here, Casey, uh, Casey Elliott, Chase Elliott and uh, the 18 car here, the one, the three, the 20, they're all in a wad right here. They get two and three wide. Look, what's this? Yikes. K. McMurray, who came out of the pit with a problem and started rear, is working his way up through there. Those are some close, close racing and a couple of close calls. Now, Chase Elliott completed that pass to move up to 23rd, and David Reagan continued to drop. He's now 27th in the 18. Yeah, he's running right alongside his teammate, Carl Edwards, uh, just not going anywhere right now. Yeah, the leader right now, Joey Logano, is actually on the same straightaway as, as those drivers. Joey Logano talking about his line around the racetrack. Just directly in the center of one or two. When he does gain, that's where I see it, it's like where you're rolling up. Yeah, if we get to the bottom, he doesn't do it. When we don't, it's bad. Yeah, copy. Like if he lets that line be seen, the arrow grip or something's there for Kurt to roll up on it. And that was Tab Boyd, his spotter in the beginning. And Michael, the other night in the Xfinity Series race, Tab Boyd was giving Joy Logano a lot of feedback about where different drivers were running. Yeah, but the leaders so far have been just digging on that yellow line, guys. But as I look through the field, there's one car that's beginning to make some ground, and he's making it on the higher side. Jimmy Johnson has changed his line. And finally, after 250 laps of the Xfinity race, and in the first 100 of this one, I think we're seeing a car here that has some options now. When he goes to the bottom of the track in the turns when he's all by himself he's pretty fast but when he catches people he's able to pop around the top of them and continue to make ground keep your eye on number 48 just like at bristol last week it looks like he's coming he restarted 24th michael he is up to 16th a gain of eight and they did take a little bit of extra time on that 48 car and did some repair to that nose when they were on pit road last yeah, there must have been a hole poked in the grill area because we tried to see it. We couldn't see it, but obviously Chad Canal saw it, and they made the appropriate adjustments, and it's paying off. Second place just came knocking on uh, Joey Logano's back door. Well, that the, is Kurt Busch. That whole first five right there, just like when we went to the uh, caution earlier, we got a heck of a battle here for the lead amongst five cars. Chris? Well, Mike, Kurt Busch's crew chief, Tony Gibson, told him about the tires that came off the car in that last pit stop. He said they looked great. If you want to be more aggressive, go after it. And that's what he's doing right now. That's a little bit of that unknown about this tire and the compound and the way it was the structure here, the multi-zone tire. I think these guys are getting a lot of confidence in that tire right now. Good to see Tony Gibson back on the box. Think back to last week, he could not go to the pit box during the race because he was fighting kidney stones. They call that inside edge, the inside two inches. They call that the endurance zone. They call the outside part the traction zone. That was a multi-zone tire. And that's just on the right side. Yes. Kevin Harvick watching from third. He has a mirror full of Martin Truex. Matt Kenseth is just behind. And Jeff Gordon says, wait a minute. I'll be there soon. Oh, there, and the Clint Boyer not far behind. I mean, this is a heck of a battle right here for these first seven or eight cars. Really tight. Tony Stewart's lurking back there. Brad Keselowski, we got a lot of good cars right near the front. Bush is getting off turn four better than Logano, and he carries it into turn one on the inside. Josh Wise is just ahead. Can Logano use Wise as a pick as they get into three? He won't have to. He's back single file. Well, that's where the spotter, remember, he was telling uh, Joey that Kurt was beating him in the middle of one and two. He was rolling the center a little bit better. I think he's got a good run on him this time. Could make the pass. And it's going to be Bush that uses Wise as the pick. Logano has nowhere to go. And Kurt Bush is only the second driver to lead this race. Of the last 500 Sprint Cup laps at Richmond, the Penske Fords have led more than 90% of them. But what we're seeing now, and, and, and this is not a surprise because I felt like the last few laps, Kurt Busch was a lot quicker than Logano. He's pulling away now. Yeah, and th another car that's really making some nice moves here is that 20 car of uh, Matt Kenseth. He just put a crossover move on 78 of Martin Truex Jr. and was able to make the pass. 
Matt's car looks real, real good. Kurt Busch begins to pull away from Logano, Harvick, Kenseth, and Truex. Joey Logano led the first 94 laps at Richmond. He has now faded to fifth. Kurt Busch is your new leader. Kevin Harvick to second. Matt Kenseth to third. Martin Truex to fourth. Just outside the top ten, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is 12th. Let's go to Jamie Little for the nationwide Dale Jr. performance report. And Dale Jr. has been one of the biggest movers early in this race. Started 26th, up to 12th now. Now before that last round of pit stops, his biggest concern was a shake that he felt was coming from the rotor. So Greg Ives, his crew chief, opted to put some tape on the rotor. So Larry is our crew chief. Explain what exactly that does and how it's going to help Jr. Well, I get a feeling, Jamie, where they actually put the tape was on the front end opening to where the air goes in to cool the rotors. It's like they're almost trying to get a little more heat in them. Plus, when you put that tape there, it increases front down force, which helps the car to turn. So they somewhat accomplish two things by putting that tape on those brake duct openings. Yeah, what happens here is you use a lot of brake in turns one and two. You use a lot of brake getting into one, and so you get a lot of heat in the brake. Then you go down the back and you don't use so much. And so that instant heat, that sudden instant heat is what warps that rotor. It happens here a lot. Cool temperatures today, 53 degrees. Track temp 84, similar to when we qualify. That's the big key, that 84 degree track temp, and I think it's gonna continue to go up some. Well, you know, Larry, one thing about the notebook that you guys keep, when's the last time we had a day race at Richmond? It's been a while, been a while. But the good news is all of our practice on Friday was in fairly sunlight. A couple of drivers having a strong day in the early going, solidly in the top 10. Tony Stewart in eighth, and Jeff Gordon in seventh, Matt. Coming off the season's best finish at Bristol, Mike, Jeff Gordon running solid in the seventh position, but much of this race so far, he's been fighting the same consistent problem, lack of front grip. It started really 
struggle with front grip. This whole run I just has not felt as good. Took off really good. Got real tight landing. Been that way the whole time. Drive off a little worse also. Well, the next thing you're going to hear is, how are your gauges? And why are they going to ask him that, Larry? So uh, they could put a little tape. little tape. But the sa yeah. same accomplishment, you accomplish the same thing that they accomplished with Dale Jr. Helps the front downforce, helps the front tires grip. Well, he and Stewart are closing right up on Clint Boyer and Brad, Brad Kozlowski. So that'll be four cars uh, battling there. I'm, I'm sorry, and Boyer and Joey Logano. That'll be four cars battling for fifth. Logano, the yellow car there. I think we've had a couple of day races here, and I think Jimmy Johnson won them both. It was 07 and 08, if I remember right. Correct. Here are your Toyota top performers. Matt Kenseth now third. Boyer sixth. Hamlin and Brett Moffitt. As you're riding with Denny to the inside of Sam Hornish. And Hornish is two laps down. Hamlin, of course, on the lead lap. I just get a feeling that Dave Rogers and Denny Hamlin probably were, they were going to have a really good race car for a night race. Yeah. They, they, they've got a lot more justice to make if they want to dial this thing in for the I daytime. I mean, Matt Kins is up here running third, and, and Carl Edwards is over here running 26, and uh, Denny's running 15th, and so... Uh, they have got some, and, and, and the 18 car, Reagan, is running 31st. So all the, other than Matt, the other guys are struggling. Could be the best race of the year so far, though, for Clint Boyer. Sure looks that way. Boyer passes Logano, and that moves him up into the top five behind Kurt Busch, Harvick, Kenseth, and Truex. The Toyota Owners 400 on Fox is sponsored by Game of War. Play free now. 
Kurt Busch still leading as NASCAR invites you to measure your environmental impact and get tips on how to reduce your carbon footprint at NASCAR.com slash green or join the conversation using the hashtag NASCAR green. 121 laps complete at the three quarter mile Richmond International Raceway. Here are your Ford EcoBoost track facts. Ford performance of one the last three Sprint Cup races here. Brad Kozlowski won the 2014 fall race from the pole. Ford go further. There are the Penske cars trying to rebound. They're back there at seventh and eighth behind Jeff Gordon, but ahead of Tony Stewart. Just kind of riding it out for right now, Matt. Mike, similar to the pattern from the first run, Joey Logano's car has lost the center turn, and he doesn't have much drive off the corner as well. He's adjusted with a track bar from inside the car, and it has not helped. I had a conversation with Todd Gordon at Bristol. He said, if you go back and look at the data, typically our first two runs of every race are our best runs. We've got to try to close that gap of where we fade a little bit from that point on. He needs some big adjustments the next stop. You know, if you think about that 22 car and qualifying, he barely made it into the final 12. He was one of the, I think he was 11th, and they made some nice adjustments air pressure wise and everything else, and he got the pole. So he didn't have the best long run car didn't look like. Well, two cars who are moving forward are the Hendrick cars of Casey Kane and Jimmy Johnson. Look at Casey Kane's graph on the day up through lap 125. It's taken him about a third of the race, but he's now cracked the top 10. I think he's going to be somebody they'll have to contend with before this day's over. And right now, within about the next 25 to 30 laps, the window opens for green flag stops. With the way the pace has fallen off, once some of the leaders start coming, you better not be far behind. Tony Stewart also having a good day. Coming off of Bristol. Yeah, the 22 he's car. Mike is really struggling in the middle of the corner. The car just will not turn. He's losing a lot of time. And how about Jamie McMurray, Chris? He restarted 30th, and he's made up half of that deficit. That's right, Mike. He had to restart 30th because of that loose left rear wheel having to come to pit lane twice there. Spinner Go, back straight away. Spin. Car in the wall. And that is the 32 of Joey Gase. Now, Gase was running three laps down in 40th position. And it might have been contact with Eric Almarola. Yeah, let's see if we can figure this one out. Well, Almarola was a lead lap car. Joey Gase was three laps down. You do the math. <laughs> Not too hard to figure, is it? Push, 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 a little more push. Well, not Whoa. only was Eric Almarola a lead lap car, the leader was not far behind him. <laughs> yeah, just, that's. Yikes. Gosh almighty. How often does she do that though? A lot. A lot. Saw that at Martinsville, Bristol. Well, as Larry pointed out, and uh, there is the impact on the Safer Barry. Safer barriers added at Richmond and tire packs borrowed from Virginia International Raceway added to uh, some of the inside wall areas here to attenuate impact. There were four cars trying to stay on the tail end of the lead lap. Danica Patrick you saw and Eric Almarola along with Justin Allgaier and uh, Austin Dillon had just been lapped so he will be the free pass car. And then Mike when you're in a situation like that with the 32 car you can't get out of the way. The kid would probably wished he could pull down and get out of the way but you have to have got to get in a spot where you can do that and he wasn't in a, he wasn't in that spot. Pit Road will be a busy place. Everybody will be in for four fresh Goodyear tires and fill it up with Sunoco race fuel. Second caution flag of the day comes at lap 127. Didn't appear to be any heavy damage to Almarola's car. All right, Kurt Busch is going to lead them in, Chris. Well, and Kurt Busch over that run says he can definitely see that the track is heating up and starting to change. But he said the 41 very good in the center of the corner. So no adjustments there. If anything, let's just try and get off the corner better. Jamie. Clint Boyer started 17th, worked his way up to fifth. Then he wants to roll the center better. Needs to be a little bit better on exit. A track bar adjustment, four tires, and they'll fill him up with fuel, Matt. Harvick and Kenseth, second and third. Harvick says the car won't roll through the center, and he's lost the forward drive off. It's too free. They're going to take tape off the grill, and air pressure change to fix in. Meanwhile, 
Kenseth, his car is much closer. Still two free on exit. Both are away. Well, as Clint Boyer came out of his pit stall, he turned around Danica Patrick, who was heading into hers. Pit road is a busy and a crowded place at Richmond. Should be quite a bit of damage to the right front of that 15. Oh, yeah. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. By Ford, we go further so you can. And by Cialis. Time for a KFC race break. You're watching NASCAR on Fox Live here in Richmond, Virginia. And on lap five, Danica Patrick close calls. Nice save, though. And Jimmy Johnson, you see, suffering some damage here. It had to be corrected then on lap 50 starting 36 moving his way up through making it now inside the top 10 after repairing the car watch the uh, tire you saw go flying Denny Hamlin in the pits no uh, penalty violation and then after leading the first 94 laps the pole sitter Joey Logano was passed by Kurt Busch who took over the lead and then moments ago Clint Boyer in the 15 two time winner here in the pits. Yeah some damage to the right front of Clint Boyer's car obviously really tight on pit row. We've seen a lot of action down there. That damage Chris doesn't look like it's going to do a whole lot of harm to the 15 car. He had driven up inside the top five so good run for Boyer. Hopefully his nose won't be too bad off. And Kurt Busch who's led the most laps of any driver this year without a win had had a victory at this point last year. Joey Logano has led the second most laps behind Kevin Harvick overall and you saw his numbers earlier. But let's talk about guys working their way up inside the top 10 aside from Jimmy Johnson Casey Kane who started 40th. I just love the car of Casey Kane. He's been able to go from 40th to the top 10 and look at Jimmy Johnson. We know he started 36 made his way toward the front had that damage team had to make some repairs on pit road and now he's inside the top 10. We talked about how this track will change and some guys in the back might come to the front. Those are two that are on their way to the front. Let's head back upstairs. This has been a KFC race break live here in Richmond Virginia. Mike. Thanks Chris. Today Toyota joins NASCAR's race to green. The pace car is the Toyota Mirai. It's Toyota's first production hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. 
when it combines hydrogen with oxygen within the fuel cell to make electricity on demand. The emissions are just water vapor. It has a range of 300 miles. Fuel cell technology. Warrior pulled up beside of Martin Trix there, and Trix said the fender looked fine. And the team jokingly told the Boyer, said, how's it look? And they said, it might have helped it. <laughs> There's always a chance. <laughs> Kurt Busch, Kevin Harvick, teammates side by side on the restart. Kenseth, Truex, Boyer, Keselowski. Yeah. We're back under green. Wow, Truex jumped right to the bottom and almost took the rest of the nose off Boyer's car in Boy, doing he so. Did. I think it's a good thing that Boyer nose would narrow it up a little bit because that just all it took for a Martin Trex to get in there, but I'm really impressed with that 20 car. What a run he's having. That's Matt Kenseth, who's third behind the two Stuart Haas Chevrolets. Coming off that win last week at Bristol. Caution. Got a car stalled down in the uh, down the middle of one and two down there. I think no, it's, it's the 98 car. It is Josh Wise. So on the restart. Lap 137. We're back under caution. Tire wear, brake dust, a lot going on on the short track of Richmond. The Toyota Owners 400 on Fox is sponsored by Toyota. Let's go places. And by Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. Under the third caution of the day at lap 140, here's your Budweiser race summary. Kurt Busch is your leader. The first of 25 lead lap cars. That'll become 26 as Trevor Bain gets the free pass. Joey Logano led 94 laps. Busch 45 and Kevin Harvick led a lap under caution. Denny Hamlin. Started second. Currently, he is 14th, right in the midst of the lead lap. That caution came out for the 98 uh, of Josh Wise, who was lined up for the restart, but the car lost fire in turn number one and would not crank. They pushed it to the garage. <laughs> 16 trying to put his grill back in place. Yes. We want to remember our, our dear friend, longtime colleague Steve Burns, who passed away Tuesday, a week after his 56th birthday, after a courageous fight with cancer. 
He touched countless lives at the track, through the television, and our thoughts and prayers go to his family and friends, and we thank everyone for the tremendous outpouring of love and support shown for Steve last weekend at Bristol. And we take joy in the fact that he witnessed the entire race and was thrilled by all the respect that was paid to him. So for those of you who would like to honor our friend Steve Burns, contributions can be made in his name to the Church of Christ at Gold Hill Road, Fort Mill, South Carolina, to Charlotte Christian School, where his son Bryson attends, or to the NASCAR Foundation. And for more information, please visit foxsports.com. One hundred forty two laps complete. And there goes the grill which is pretty much ornamental uh, on Sprint Cup cars. They take their air in below the center line of the bumper below where it says fusion there. Uh, but that grill helps establish manufacturer identity. And NASCAR posted him. He had to come to pit road. I think one reason he and Matt Fuchsia had not come to pit road. He was going to be the first driver one lap down fighting to get that free pass. The Toyota Mirai hydrogen fuel cell vehicle sprints to pit road and here we go once again teammates lined up for the restart Bush and Harvick then Kenseth and Truex Keselowski Logano way to the bottom goes Larson. He's going to get away with that one. Boy, wow man he just forced that thing and everybody had to he was in the best spot on the bottom he had a lot of wheels outside of him to bank off of. That old saying eight wheels 12 wheels corner better than four. Oh heck yeah baby. And Kyle Larson picks up a couple of spots. He goes from 11th to 9th on the restart in the 42. Well, it doesn't matter if we're at a half mile, three quarter mile, or two mile. These drivers know the restart is the time to get some spots. Oh, yeah, that's when they're all bunched up right there in front of you. Jeff Gordon battling Clint Boyer. This is for seventh. And Larry, if the cars all run the same speed, which most of the time they do, hard to pass them once you get single file and spread out. Johnson to the inside of Larson right behind the Boyer Gordon battle. Yeah Jimmy Johnson of course started this race back in the 36 37 spot. His crew had a heck of a stop the last time the pit road got him inside the top 10. Now he's well up inside the top 10 and ninth. I think Boyer is going to prevail not just not sure that that outside groove is rubbered in quite enough yet but the more they keep working at it the better their chance for success Matt. Now Mike on that pit stop Jeff Gordon was frustrated. He felt like some safety vehicles got in the way and might have cost him a spot. He hit pit road sixth, restarted seventh. But the one piece of knowledge he passed on to Alvin Gustafson, you cannot overheat the tires early on in the run because you'll lose grip so quick anyways you'll pay the price even more. Got to be a little more gentle in the early portion. Thanks Matt. Watching this 25 car Chase Elliott. Now he's making that outside work. He just sailed around Denny Hamlin in the 11. And he's now working on the 40 car here and he's got a little speed on this high line. This young fella has a lot of poise and composure. You'd never know this was only his second start in the Sprint Cup Series. Then again he's driving a full on Hendrick Motorsport car so it's as good as anything else here. Jamie. Danny Hamlin started second. He's just had a handful today. He's back in 20th, saying his biggest problem is no forward bite on that last stop. They took a big swing at it, a track bar adjustment, wedge, air pressure, hoping something will come around and help this 11 team. Thanks, Jamie. He is 21st right now. And now there's Carl Edwards this, a lap down. How about Landon Castle? He is putting up a fight now. He's not laying over. I can tell you that. Uh, they got to work to get around Landon. And he's driving the wheels off that thing right now and doing a good job. I mean, heck fire. He's running 19th. Yeah, I think any time a team like this can run inside the top 20, that is a big day for them because he's beaten everyone he needs to be beaten and a lot of other drivers that probably at the end of the day, he shouldn't be out running. Justin Allgaier right behind him. Oh, guy rounding out the top 20 good his run first top 10 last yes. week in Bristol and this little team gets better and better Steve Addington they've added a second car says it's really helped. It's your barge when need that 40. <laughs> little little encouragement there for for all who now has a mirror full of Hamlin. 
up front. Kevin Harvick has kind of been content to run behind teammate Kurt Busch. Four cars rolling the center a lot better than he was early on, and that's where he's really closing up on Kurt Busch in the 41, right through the center of the corner. You know, for five consecutive years, Kevin Harvick has won some type of race here, either Sprint Cup or Xfinity Series. 153 laps complete. How about a Sunday Fox NASCAR crank it up? Josh Wise back in the race. They fixed the uh, problems on his car that caused him to bring out the third caution flag of the day as A.J. Allmendinger and Tony Stewart battle for 14th place, Matt. Mike, one of the they've tried to focus on for smoke is on the restarts. So that's where they feel like they give up each restart a position or two. You saw it again on that last restart. He just doesn't like the feel of the car on low pressures with this package. They've made some improvements right now, though, on the course of a long run. He says about the two-thirds mark of the corner is where he loses grip. They made an air pressure adjustment to try to help that for this run. And, and, and Mike, Larry, we were talking about get them while they're all bunched up on a restart. List these times. Leader, 74, second, 73, 87, 80, 82, 89, 85, 86, 80. I mean, they're all running within hundreds of each other, the first 10 cars. Even a heated battle for 25th as the two Roush Fenway Fords and that Childress Chevy all try to stay on the lead lap. That's why, well, they, that's why they, it, restarts are so are so exciting. That's your best chance to get in front of somebody once you get in front Blowing of Blowing up down stage. in turn one is Josh Wise. Fire beneath that car. Can't come across yet. Can't come across yet. Still a line here. Still a line. Still a line. Start eating away a little bit. Just up here. There you go. You're good. I'm surprised. I, I, I thought I understood him to say that 98 when he was pushed to the garage was having oil pressure issues. He had been in the garage area <clears throat> and was 24 laps down. So Josh Wise puts us under the fourth caution flag of the day. And flew it down, they'll have to clean up. Yeah, he was high up out of the groove, but there is some, uh, some fluid from the uh, blown engine. A 
Coca-Cola is the official soft drink of NASCAR. Here's how the Coca-Cola racing family is performing today. Joey Logano led the first 94 laps of this race. Greg Biffle a lap down, the rest of them all on the lead lap, and they'll be joined by Carl Edwards, who gets the free pass on this caution. Yeah, kind of good news, bad news for Carl. I mean, you do get the free pass, but you're not running. you got to get going, man. Well, it's been 19 laps since that last restart, but pit road will be a busy place again for four Goodyear tires. Chris? And Kurt Busch saying that he lost a little bit of short run speed on that last run. He said uh, the car just a little bit tight, the center off the corner. Tony Gibson saying, hey, let's not make any changes here. Jamie? Brad Kozlowski said those last changes really helped the car. He lost a little drive off, but gained a little turn and found a little more speed. A four tire stop here for the two, Matt. The 20 of Kansas slides to a stop. His car was freer on entry and exit. And it was turning a little bit better though that run. He wants an air pressure change. Meanwhile, Harvick says his car is almost perfect. A slight adjustment with what he called for. He's in that window where he likes that four car. Problem on Brett Moffat's stop. He came into his box that began to change the right side tires and the car rolled forward a foot or so. He'll be the last one to leave pit road. Kurt Busch beats Kevin Harvick by a narrow margin to retain the lead. Sprint will cut your rate plan in half. Bring Sprint your Verizon or AT&T bill. Turn in your old phone. They'll cut your rate plan in half at a Sprint retail store or at Sprint.com slash half price. Martin Truex Jr. has already eclipsed last year's run of top 10 finishes. Seven this year, five all of last season. Yeah, Bristol's mean streak put an end to right. his top 10 streak. 
Each week, look for the race day Advance Auto Parts driver spotlight. Yesterday, race day caught up with Kyle Larson, only on Fox Sports 1. You know, NASCAR is part of their green initiative. They have been uh, sending digital autographs, autographed photos of different drivers out to fans. They had four or five of them with Kyle Larson, and in one of them, he was doing that cross-eyed staring down the goats <laughs> thing that we saw last week. It was Larson. pretty funny. <laughs> Pretty funny. Right now he is in the top 10. Another look at your Toyota Mirai pace car. This hydrogen fuel cell vehicle has 153 horsepower. As Toyota's leading the future of driving today and tomorrow with this hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. Eight cars took the wave around. None of them got back on the lead lap. Carl Edwards with the free pass car as Boy, Kurt Busch was trying to take all three lanes down into turn one. Yeah, but oh, Harvey he slailed her in there on the outside and was able to secure the second spot. Teammates right behind him. That two is getting better and better and better. They made some nice changes on that car. Well, I'll tell you who really shined that last pit trip to pit road was Joy Logano's crew in that 22. They picked up three spots. You can see right there, there is the big difference. One second. See the driver time on pit road is the same but that one second that was a big difference at least three spots for Joey Logano big long jam behind the 42 as Ryan Newman had to pedal it they took him three wide down into the corner and now they're three wide again mid pack as Keselowski goes through for second place and remember we mentioned early in the race when it started we're going to see some comers and goers we're going to see some guys that wasn't very good when the track was green as this track rubbers up and starts to change it's going to work for some others. Keselowski's trying to continue a streak here. In the last three Sprint Cup races here, he has led the halfway lap, and that is 27 laps away. Well, remember, he had this race. He thought he had a shot at winning this race last year, and he and uh, I think it was Jimmy Johnson got into a disagreement on the last restart, cost Keselowski the win, but he dominated this race last fall. Speaking of Jimmy Johnson, the last time a Shiv Hendrick Chevrolet driver won here was Jimmy Johnson back in 2008. And you see three of those Chevrolet drivers running nose to tail. Kane, the 24, and Chris Neville, the 48, just keeps moving up. Yeah, the 48, really good all weekend, Larry. He said he's never had a car that was that good off the hauler on Friday. He said typically they're having to search for all kinds of speed. But on Friday, it was really small adjustments. So that car moving up well. He said the balance is good. If anything, just a little tight in the center. You can see that little tight in the center as he's running along behind Jeff Gordon there. He just can't get back to the throttle quite quick enough, but uh, they may be able to adjust that out of that car. Now, right there, that's where they decided to spend a little extra time on pit road to fix that nose. 13th place, Matt Kenseth trying to rebound here. Gets Paul Menard. Almondinger right behind them. Then Earnhardt Stewart, Almirola Hamlin, and Chase Elliott Landon Castle battling. There's Dale Jr. I'll tell you another car there that's made an incredible run back to the front is the car of Jamie McMurray. Uh, came to the pits with a loose wheel, had to restart last or right near last, and right now he's moved himself into the top 10. Yeah, that was right at about 100 laps ago when he had to come back in and restart it back in the 31st position. Teammate right behind him, they're running the 10th and 11th. Now, right in front of him, uh, Clint Boyer. We saw the right front damage that he got exiting his pit stall as Danica Patrick was turning into hers. But on a track this size, how concerned are you going to be about that? You know what? In the past, I'd say, oh, no big deal. But these cars are so aero sensitive. And even though this track is a three quarter mile, you're still making some pretty serious straightaway speed here. I don't think it's a huge effect on the car, but it might have some effect on the car. And I'm sure what he and Brian Patty weighed out. Do we want to give up that much track position? Because they were inside the top five after that pit stop and sitting here now with almost 30 drivers on the lead lap. It's a huge risk versus reward. Like I say, these guys, even on, uh, even at Martinsville, I hear them complain about aero, and uh, these cars become that sensitive when they're running down on the ground the way they do. No ride height could be. Jamie. Well, Clint Boyer's been relatively quiet all race long until now. He's starting to fade back. And on that last stop, all they did was put four tires on it, made no adjustments, and now he's screaming loose in that 15. 
Now, across the board, I've heard time and time again, I think it was Jimmy Johnson that may have had a, said that the, whatever they did to their car uh, for qualifying, oh, no, it was Casey, Casey Kane. Kane. Uh, whatever they did to the car for qualifying, all they did was put four tires on it, and the car drove terrible. And all it takes is for the spring rate of one tire to be off, and it can change the way that car is driving. These cars are just amazingly sensitive these days. Now, Ryan Newman is 13th. That hearing was held in front of the appeals board, and the penalty reduced. Uh, but the majority of the penalties and infractions were upheld. Richard Childress and the team have elected to appeal the final step. The Supreme Court of NASCAR is the chief appellate officer, Brian Moss. Now, that... That won't be heard until the first week of May. So that means that Luke Lambert, the team engineer, the tire specialist, Larry, they're here working on the car until the final appeal is heard. And I think that's May 6th, so they're here, and they should also be able to be at Talladega next week. Boy, but if they don't get something done, just think when they will be back at the track uh, for six weeks. For 19th, Denny Hamlin on the high side. I have loved watching Chase Elliott and Landon Castle battle ever since this last restart, the 25 and 40. Right now, they're about a half a lap down to our leader, Kurt Busch, in that 41. And then, Mike, this is a great, it's a great race for Chase Elliott. He raced uh, Friday night. And, and, and so having a day off probably helped him because he might have been a little tired if he'd have had to jump in his car and run last night. How's the rookie doing, Jamie? Doing pretty well. He's actually saying he's been happy with the car. All they've made is an air pressure adjustment all day. And I talked to Kenny Francis, his crew chief. He said our main goal here is just to finish all of the laps, something they didn't do in his first outing at Martinsville. Just learn a lot. The next time he'll be in this car is for the sprint showdown at the end of May. Like you said, it'll be five to six weeks. So he's doing a nice job right now, hanging in with a happy car. He got a top five Friday night in the Xfinity Series race. I love what he told his team after the Martinsville race. He said, you know, those dudes that run at the back of a Sprint Cup Series race, they're still pretty good. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> Kurt Busch, the leader of the Toyota Mid-Race Report coming up. The Toyota Owners 400 on Fox is sponsored by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. And by.
NASCAR on Fox live from Richmond, Virginia. Hope you're having a good Sunday and thanks for watching. Time now for the near mid-race report. We're almost at 200 of the 400 laps. Pole sitter and Daytona 500 winner Joey Logano went the first 94 laps. He's also turned the fastest lap in this race. Jimmy Johnson and Casey Kane, who started outside the top 35, have worked their way inside the top 10. Daryl, who are you keeping an eye on? I'm going to go with my TV colleague, a guy that does a pretty good job up here in the booth, doing a great job out on the racetrack right now. He's running second, but he'll be number one when it's over with. Brad Keselowski. Hmm. I have a lot of confidence in Casey Kane, Daryl. He started in the 40th position. We've heard all day long it's hard to pass. You can't pass. Casey Kane's passed a bunch of cars. He only got to pass five more. I say he does it. Michael, last week at Bristol, I felt Kurt Busch had a shot to win that race until they made a late race pit stop and all the other leaders stayed out. What I like about that 41 car, good on the short run, good on the long run. Larry Mack, I like his teammate Kevin Harvick. Now he's lurking there in third. His car has been fantastic on the long run, and he's in the, the Harvick zone, waiting until the end. His three wins here, he didn't take the lead for the final time until at least 16 or less laps to go. Jamie McMurray had loose lug nuts on his first pit stop. Matt McCall had the confidence to bring him in, restart him 30th, and let him get those spots back. He's done that. He's got two recent fourth place finishes here. He may not win it, but I like his run back to the front. And Mike, recent history indicates we'll see a mad dash to the end here. Last season, there were three cautions in the last 30 laps. And remember, two years ago, a green-white checker overtime finish. Kevin Harvick came from seventh on the final restart to win that race. Whose turn will it be today? Second half of the race will determine that. In fact, if you're looking at a Harvick Jimmy Johnson type finish, 11 times those two, including twice this year, have finished 1 2, with Jimmy Johnson being the best of that nine times. We'll have more from Richmond in a moment. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. And by Chevy Silverado. High strength steel for high strength dependability. 206 laps complete. Kurt Busch leading. See why one of the most revered names in NASCAR trusts the most winning name in NASCAR at Chevy.com slash Dale Jr. 
Mike, I think we're really seeing that change in the track we were talking about. If you think about that, well, let's just choose Matt Kenseth, for instance. Up there really challenging for the lead before this last caution flag. And right now, Matt has fallen all the way back to 10th place. And so I think the track has gone through that change that we were talking about. Some of the guys that were good early the first half struggling second half. It seems to have equally affected Kenseth and the Toyota right behind him, Clint Boyer. They've both fallen back after being in contention earlier. Well, there's a couple of guys we could say that about. Tony Stewart even. He was in the top six. And right now, he's all the way back to 18. So some of the changes that need to be made to these cars are not keeping up with the track. Paul Menard, Chase Elliott, 16th place battle here. Stewart behind them, Almendinger ahead of them. Yeah, I just see Chase, as I watch him in the, uh, around other cars, he's getting more and more confident, and he's figured out where and when to pass, and it's really paying off for him. Let's move back up to the head end of the lead lap where Brad Keselowski is one second behind Kurt Busch. We listened in on Brad. The best run of the race because the car turns into two-third better. Lost some extra drive. If I could get my extra drive back to go in this two-third turn, then I'd be able to beat these guys. Perfect. Moved up at one and two behind you. But it sounds like they have fixed his first problem first. He's, they've got the car turning good. The front tires are gripping. They just have to make sure when they fix the exit, they don't give some of the turning back. And, and, and I love that feedback. It's precise. It's not, well, I'm not sure. I don't know. I, well, maybe. I mean, that's precise feedback that will help Paul Wolf make the right changes to that car. Chase Elliott moves up to 16th. He restarted 20th. Let's move up to the top five where Martin Truex is in fourth. He is 2.4 seconds off the lead, Matt. Mike, it's been a quiet and consistent day for Martin Truex Jr. in the 78 car. Small adjustments every stop by Cruci Cole Pern. The car's just been on slightly on the tight side, cutting the center, but he's been very quiet on the radio. And DW, you know from a driver's standpoint, if you're quiet, very little communication on the radio, the car must be pretty good. Yeah, when I'm quiet, that means I don't need anything. And uh, just let me drive. And a, lot of, a lot of drivers don't like to be bothered. They just like to focus and let them do the driving. You drive. Now just about two seconds behind Truex comes Casey Kane with Jamie McMurray. Chris? And Mike, listening to Casey Kane, the first 100 laps of this race, you would think he was running 43rd, five seconds off the pace. He said the five car was just terrible, wouldn't turn in the center of the corner. But with all the pit stops, they've made that car better and better. Now turning the center of the corner, and he said he's trying some things down in turn four, coming off that corner a little bit more shallow, and he's found some speed. But Mike, you talked about Jamie McMurray in that one. He just drove by Casey Kane in that five. Now Jamie has cracked the top five in the fifth position. Not surprised. Let's check in with Jamie and get a nationwide performance update on Dale Earnhardt Jr. Well, he started this race 26, and I talked to his crew chief, Greg Ives. He said, we're confident we're going to pass a bunch of cars early because you have to be aggressive at this racetrack, and that's exactly what Dale Jr. is. He moved his way up, but these last couple of runs, his car is really stabilized, and his latest feedback, the right front tire is just really sliding through the corners. He's not getting that grip he wants, so on the next stop, watch for the 88 to make an air pressure adjustment. Thanks, Jamie. All five of the Hendrick cars running in the top 16. And just to remind you, yes, each team is limited to fielding four full-time cars. They can add a fifth car for a rookie driver in up to seven races. And that's the plan for Chase Elliott this year. And just think what an advantage that, that can be or should be. You've got, you got five crew chiefs that can talk to each other. What are you doing? What are you doing? What changes did you make? What changes did you make? How did that affect your car? Then you get the feedback from the driver, and you can put those pieces of that puzzle together. You're going to have a great run at the end of the day. That's uh, Jeb Burton on the outside in the 23. He's our leading Sunoco Rookie of the Year candidate as Joey Logano and Jimmy Johnson move by on the inside. Yeah, we've been talking about comers and goers as we're well past the halfway point. I think one driver they continue to kind of lose ground is Joey Logano in at 22, our pole sitter. 
And Jimmy Johnson in the 48, Chad Knauss, they keep moving to the front. And we've seen that with that 22 quite a bit. Uh, you know, start off like a house of fire and then fade through the middle of the race. So uh, they got to make some drastic changes to the old 22 car. Brad Kozlowski now within a half a second of Kurt Busch, who has now led a race high 124 laps. The Toyota Owners 400 on Fox is sponsored by Mad Max Fury Road from Warner Brothers Pictures. On May 15th, the future belongs to the man. We're under green at Richmond. We're just 28 laps past halfway. Here's your Can-Am race summary. Kurt Busch has led a race high 132 laps. The first of 26 cars on the lead lap. Joey Logano and Kevin Harvick have also led. Four caution flags, a competition yellow. Al Marola turned Joey Gase around. Uh, and then Josh Weiss' car first stopped and then spectacularly blew up after they fixed it for two caution flags. That's a total of four. So Bush and Logano have led all but two laps today. As you get a bug's eye view down the straightaway. Here is Kevin Harvick under fire for fourth place. Jamie McMurray. Chris? Well, since Jamie McMurray's gotten up into the top 10, initially he was saying he could only one run one line around the racetrack, but in the last 10 to 15 laps, he said the groove is definitely getting wider and the one car working well, both high and low. He said that car is great getting off the corner. That's where he's beating everybody. Well, the leaders are, uh, the leaders are coming, and you can see here Casey Kane is closing right up on the back of the four car. Uh, there's a heck of a battle for standing just ahead of the leaders here, trying to stay on the lead lap. Matt? Mike, once Kevin Harvick knocked the newness off the tires and the car settled in, it really didn't fall off much during the previous runs, but now he says the car won't do anything. 
unlike earlier. Now it won't turn, and it's definitely free on exit. And Darrell, I found it interesting. So many drivers this week talked about the difference in the balance between a short run car here and a long run car, having both. Now, Kurt Busch just passed uh, the 55 of Brett Moffat. Moffat had a problem on the last pit stop. He started at the tail end of the lead lap cars because the car rolled forward in the pit. They were slow on their stop, and now he's paid the price. He's just gone one lap down. As now you got Trevor Bain, Denny Hamlin, Carl Edwards, Danica Patrick about to be in that same position. Yeah, Carl Edwards, Danica Patrick up here. They've been trying to stay on the lead lap and uh, you see the 15 here. They made a little contact with a three car. Let's see if we can uh, see what happened. Well, the three's a lap down. Austin Dillon. Boyer racing with uh, the 24 of Jeff Gordon. Oops. Yeah. Well, that right front fender on the 15, it's already got a little damage on it. A little more ain't going to hurt anything. <laughs> I don't know if Austin Dillon would agree with that or not, but. Uh... Darrell, that's got to be the toughest spot on this racetrack. Turn two looks like it's the tightest place on the racetrack yeah, to get a good launch off Well, there. if you can get through that corner, you, cut, you carry a lot of speed out of there, but it's so tight on corner exit that if somebody's up on the outside of you, you saw it with the Clint Boyer, you just can't stay off of them. You're riding with Denny Hamlin right now. He's fighting to be the first driver one lap down to maybe get a free pass should we get that caution. But what you get these long green runs like this, the leader just keeps putting more drivers a lap down, and you get that free pass spot, then you lose it. Now there's Brad Keselowski trying to close on Kurt Busch. Six tenths of a second, that's the difference. Jamie? Well, when Brad Keselowski was running third, he's second now, of course, he said this is the best run they've had today. It turns better. Now, if we could just get our drive off a little bit better, we can beat these guys. And then he went around the 78, and he's working on the 41 of Kurt Busch. Well, now, Hamlin will be the first car one lap down until Kurt Busch laps his teammate Danica Patrick. Jamie McMurray keeps climbing the ladder here, third place. Yeah, that car is uh, really, really good. It's been great on this long run, and he is a little bit quicker than the two cars in front of him. On the lap 50 competition caution, he had to come in twice for a loose left rear wheel. He had been eighth. Didn't take him all that long to make that up, and now top five. We're starting to see some green flag stops, but these are the drivers that actually took the wave around on that last caution, so they're going to have to pit about 20 or 30 laps earlier than our leaders. Yeah, since we only had about 20 laps between cautions, eight drivers took that wave around. None of them got back on the lead lap, so they will cycle through pit stops now. Danica just went down a lap to our leader, Kurt Busch. I was watching. We had a shot at Dale Jr. there. I've been watching him. He doesn't have a super super fast car but he's got a pretty steady car he's up to 11th running some relatively good lap times 160 laps to go Jamie and Dale Jr. just said all things considered my car is pretty darn good he said it's just a handful the first 20 laps but the long runs were really good so he's coming around the longer this race runs yeah and Jamie I watched him in practice he ran a lot of practice laps I've been watching him in the race he's exactly what he said doesn't start off that great but it gets stays pretty good over the long haul. We talked about Chase Elliott finishing second in both set Xfinity Series races here last year. His crew chief was Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s crew chief, Greg Ives, that did that. Carl Edwards is just, he's looking for a checkered flag, I think. It's just been a long day for Carl in this 19. Not working for him today, buddy. 158 laps to go. Kurt Busch leads Brad Keselowski by 2.3 seconds.
The Toyota Owners 400 on Fox is sponsored by Toyota. Let's go places. And by Sprint, bring in your Verizon or AT&T bill and we'll cut your rate plan in half. 150 to go. Kurt Busch still leading. Jamie McMurray now second on this <laughs> Safe Kids Day. Nationwide presents this national event to celebrate kids, prevent injuries, and save lives. Safe Kids Worldwide and Nationwide work together to reduce childhood injury and protect what matters most, our children. Visit MakeSafeHappen.com for home safety tips and to find a safety event in your community. That's the future of our sport right there. All those kids in the grandstand, it's great to see. We mentioned Jamie McMurray up to second. He passed Keselowski, Truex and Kane, then Johnson, Harvick, Kenseth, Logano, Earnhardt. Who's missing from that list? Jeff Gordon. He has dropped to 11th. Matt. Mike, on the previous run, Jeff Gordon said his 24 car took off very well. Landed a little tight, and he also felt like he was a little too hard on the brakes. They made a chassis adjustment. Now Gordon thinks they went too significantly uh, in the other direction on that chassis adjustment. He wants to back that up on his next stop right now. He's dropped out of the top 10. He's trying to hang on to this next green flag pit stop. Well, Matt, right behind him comes that rookie. That kid is in his second start, Chase Elliott. He's coming up on the back bumper of Jeff Gordon right now. That 25 car, very consistent. And those green flag stops Matt talked about, that window opens here in about 15 to 20 laps. I think some of the guys at the back that are about to go a lap down, I think they'll do what they're short pitting, trying to get advantage of those fresh tires like we see Danica Patrick in this 10. The yeah, longest green flag stretch we've had today, 147 laps to go. Larry, could this be the last stop? It's going to be borderline, right, Mike. Okay, I yep. think, yeah, we, we still have to make one more pit stop. But the problem is she, she'll have, going back out there on fresh tires, she will absolutely be running over other drivers until they come to pit road. Yeah, we saw uh, Jeb Burton come out of the pits with fresh tires, and he was a rocket passing cars right and left. And we'll see others as well. Austin Dillon now pitting. As we begin this cycle of green flag stops, we have 21 cars on the lead lap. The last of which are Almarola, Castle, and Allgaier. Those three have had quite a battle all race long. I'll tell you one thing. That 41 car has gapped the field right now. He's coming off turn two. Keselowski running uh, second or third right in the middle of turns through one and two. But it looks to me like the only guy that's got anything for the 41 right now is the one. Jamie. Brad Keselowski just uh, radio to the team. I think I've gone down a cylinder. His crew chief, Paul Wolf, talking him through it, said there's nothing you can do at this point. Brad said, are you sure I can't do any switches, flip anything? And he said, no, just ride it out and let's see where it takes us. Yeah, just watch the top RPM right there. These guys should be turning somewhere between 8,500 and 9,000. Ding dong. Jamie McMurray calling for the lead. Yeah, I mean, he's been somewhere around a half a second quicker than for the 41 car of Kurt Busch. That makes you really happy, doesn't it? <laughs> well, not just because I picked him. I, but I really like the call Matt McCall made early in this race. You know, you got a great race car. We've got a great race driver. We'll restart 30th. We'll make it up. Boy, have they. They have done that for sure. He caught Kurt Busch in the 41 in a hurry, but he's not able to get by him. Kurt was actually caught in some lap traffic during that time as well. But that's a typical, that's the way Jamie drives. He's not going to force the issue. He's not going to push it. You see him getting around on the outside. He, he wanted to be sure that he made a safe pass and not put himself in, in a harm's way there, jeopardy. Now the lap car of Ladnick Castle, first time he's been lapped today, but staying up to the high side. McMurray crosses under three wide. Here we go into turn three. <laughs> wow, that's exciting. And that, again, that's a good Jamie McMurray move. He knew he couldn't. All three of them couldn't make it in there. So he backed out, let Kurt have the line. And you see that white car, Matt De Benedetto, an 83 car. That shows you right there four fresh tires. Ooh, passes them, pass them both down the straightaway. Benedetto does. Just a little contact there. Now Austin Dillon's coming. He also has fresh tires. 
Quite a disparity. All right, Joey Logano is in. As McMurray takes the lead. Can only hold him off so long. Uh, McMurray's just that much better. You are the leader. Matt? Earlier stop, they shuffled the air pressure in three of the four tires and made a chassis adjustment this time. Logano says the car is on the splitter early and it just doesn't have the good balance like it did earlier in the run. Ryan Newman on pit road. Pitting out of 20th place. Matt? Earlier in the race, Ryan Newman was fighting a tight race car, but the previous two runs, it swung to the free side. Big adjustment the last time. Air pressure change this stop. Chris Neville? And Kyle Larson has lost five spots since that last run. He's saying, I'm just leaning too hard on the right rear. That car loose halfway through the run. Martin Truex is in. Here comes Casey Kane, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and Matt Kenseth. And Kyle Larson coming into the pits. I'm not sure he was on where he was with the commitment line, but he almost got those barrels at the end of pit road. Finally, at the that, last second, makes the turn. That was close. Matt? Now look for a chassis adjustment for Martin Truex Jr. On this run, his car was a little bit tight and a little bit on the free side, but small adjustments, Chris. Kurt Busch just giving up the lead to Jamie McMurray. He said, if anything, he'd like some short run speed, and that one car is getting off the corner better than he is. Stewart, Almendinger, Reagan completing stops, going back out. Trevor Bain on pit road along with Clint Boyer. Chase Elliott and our leader, Chris. Jamie McMurray very happy with his race car. He says, I've got the best car when it comes to getting off the corner, but he'd like it better, a little bit better in the center. Matt. Ch chassis adjustment across the back on both sides for Kevin Harvick. He says the four car won't do anything. It won't turn in the center, and he's lost all forward drive on exit. Only four lead lap cars have not stopped. Brad Keselowski cycles through to the lead, Matt. And Jeff Gordon is in. Look for a chassis jumping. Yep. Nope. Didn't, there he goes. The crew member puts the wrench in the back window. Going to adjust. Remember we told you earlier, trying to back up that wedge adjustment they made on the 24 earlier. Looks like Trevor Bain caught the wall. Yeah, he got it pretty good, too. The whole right side's caved in, but it looks like he's going to make it to pit road. So the only drivers who have not stopped, Carl Edwards, Justin Allgaier, Brad Keselowski. Yeah, and if they can catch a caution, we only have two drivers on the lead lap. But the other side of that, Brad Keselowski, he's given up over two seconds a lap by staying out there. Yeah, and Trevor Bain, who hit the wall pretty good, Larry. Is, uh, I thought he was going to try to make it to the pits, but uh, now the 55's up in the wall, and the six cars stayed out. Limping down the backstretch comes Brett Moffitt. We are still under green. I'd say these tires are pretty worn at this point. Uh, they can't work him down to pit road. There's too much traffic. He's going to have to come around it, again. He's, he's got a flat tire in the car. He just couldn't turn it down right there. Oh, a tire down. Still green. And again, Brad Keselowski in the two Yellow's still out. staying out Yellow's there. Out. Clear, clear, clear. There's the caution at lap 270. And Kurt Busch just had passed Brad Keselowski to get back on the lead lap. So that's three drivers on the lead lap right now. I'd say these tires there are probably pretty worn out. That's a long, long green run right there. I think you'll see Moffitt blows a right front tire. Trying to turn and just won't turn when that tire's down. And plus you pick up all the debris. Now we also said Trevor Bain. Got up and into the wall. There's his number six. Yeah, he got into it pretty good here. I, I did a lot of right side damage on that car. I thought he was going to try to make it to pit road, but he stayed out. Now Moffat, who was on the lead lap most all day until they had that problem on the prior pit stop, and he got caught and lapped. He's now in his pit with a good bit of right front damage. Now here's what should happen right here. You're going to see Brad Keselowski, Justin Algar, pit road still closed right now. And I think even Kurt Busch, they're going to come to pit road, get four fresh tires. All the other drivers that made the green flag stop, our leaders that are one down, they'll stay out and take the wave around. They don't have that many laps on their tires. Now for that to happen though, the leader has to pit, so. We'll sort that out. Jamie McMurray should be the free pass car. With the caution coming out right when green flag pit stops had almost ended. 
interesting strategy by the two car to stay out for that long. Well, Mike, he's could got have bit him, but yeah, he's got an engine problem. I mean, it's, it sounds like he's probably down a cylinder, uh, and and so he had to it's getting good fuel mileage. He's not using but seven cylinders. But that was a huge break for Justin Allgaier because he had not pitted and was running in second on the lead lap behind Brad Keselowski. Steve Addington, nice work. All right, Keselowski will pit. Justin Allgaier, Kurt and Bush will be the other cars on the lead lap. Yeah, I, I, you know, it hadn't been that, that many laps since Kurt Busch pitted, but I would go ahead and still take advantage of four fresh tires. 128 laps to go on a Sunday afternoon in Richmond. We're under caution for Brett Moffitt. One hundred twenty six laps to go. We are under caution for the fifth time today for Brett Moffat. A lot of almost everyone, almost everyone had been on pit road within the last ten or so laps. So that means a lot of drivers may elect to not pit under this caution and take the wave around. Our Fox NASCAR rules analyst Andy Petrie can explain their options. Yeah, Mike, this is a rule that a lot of drivers are going to take advantage of here when we get one to go. Is they stayed on the racetrack, the leader pitted, which was Keselowski, and then when it, they go back green, they want to have the leader as the first car behind the pace car. So they allow these cars to come around the racetrack on the wave around so they can come back and get that lap back. It's, uh, it's kind of a strange incident here because we have so many cars, but the one car of Jamie McMurray is a free pass car. He'll be able to start in front of all the wave around cars, and that's just the way the rule works. So then we will have it looks like 18 or 19 cars on the lead lap. What what used to happen was the leader would have been Keselowski. He would have started mid pack if we didn't have this rule. 
Kurt Busch talking about wave arounds. I don't understand how they can all be wave arounds when they're behind the caution car. The, the two leaders pitted, the two and the 51, because they got their tires, they're a lap down, and then I'm the leader. We didn't pit here under yellow. That's exactly right. Everyone between the caution car and Kurt Busch is eligible for that wave around. Jamie. Well, Brad Kozlowski had said he thought he was down his cylinder. They raised the, the hood on that stop. Paul, what did you learn? Well, we just wanted to make sure it wasn't a plug wire or something. We definitely dropped the cylinder and uh, just wanted to cover our bases. We figured it was internal, but um, we, we had the opportunity to take a look and uh, we didn't see anything. So, well, uh, who knows? Maybe it'll hold on to the end of the race and we'll get all the points we can. Paul told him, don't baby it. Just go for it and he'll restart second. Mike. Thanks, Jamie. So at the time of caution, there were three cars on the lead lap. The two, Keslowski, the 51, Allgaier, and the 41, Bush. The free pass car was the one, McMurray, and 15 drivers took the wave around. So when we restart, we will have 19 cars on the lead lap. Yeah, and now, now a big concern if you're behind Brad Keselowski, I'm sure the word's gotten around that he's down a cylinder. He's not going to be able to take off like everybody else is. He's up on that outside. He better watch out. Carl's had a bad enough day, and Carl's right behind him. And, and Carl Edwards in the 19, he's the first driver one lap down trying to get in position to get a free pass. The Toyota Mirai, hydrogen fuel cell powered. Mixes that hydrogen with oxygen to make electricity, make power, and the only emissions, water vapor. That's a first for NASCAR. Here we go. Kurt Busch, Brad Keselowski, Justin Allgaier, Carl Edwards, through the middle. Can he make it? Well, he's got to make it. Uh, he's got to get back up there and try to get around the leader if he has any shot at all. Uh, that's why he was so aggressive on that start. Now, Kurt Busch has five laps on his tires versus Justin Allgaier, Carl Edwards, and almost everyone else that's a lap down right in that area. They have fresh tires on. Jimmy Johnson three wide to the bottom as they squeeze into turn one. And the 34 backs out of it there. That's Reed Sorensen this week. Chris Busher's been driving that 34. But Busher wanted to concentrate on his Xfinity race last night where he is the point leader. So Sorensen takes that over today. Back to the restart. Watch the 19 of Edwards. Come rocketing to the middle. Down in turn one. And Daryl, I would say where Brad Keselowski pays the biggest price being down a cylinder is when everyone's own four fresh tires and you can use so much throttle. Yeah, that and the only place is really hurting him is on a straightaway. He loses a little bit of straightaway speed, but he's cooking that thing through the corners and it's not going to hurt his corner speed that much with four tires on there particularly. So into the straightaway a little bit, but after that he's fine. Justin Allgaier racing half a second behind Kurt Busch for the lead. Chris. And Mike, he's loving this run of short tracks. He was eighth at Bristol last weekend, and right now he says he's got a great car early in the race. He said it was way too loose, but they've been working on it all day long, and he said that car is very strong getting off the corner. What an impressive. I mean, just think about this team. This kid right here, and they had his first top ten last week at Bristol, and here he is running second today. Nice work. Martin Truex trying to get back up into the top five against Joey Logano. Now Logano fifth place, but he was 14th in line on the restart. Jimmy Johnson right with him in the 48. Nice little battle there between the 78, the 22, the 48, and Matt Kenseth has made a little bit of a recovery. And you know the thing that really got Matt Kenseth down that I somewhat kind of put two and two together is they actually had a pretty slow pit stop a couple of stops ago. That's what got him behind the most. Yeah, because right now his car looks pretty good. 11th place, Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to take it away from teammate Casey Kane. As they battle, let's take a nationwide inside ride with the 88. Up there by himself. All clear by three to the 24. All clear. By himself. Clear.
Sixth place, Johnson Legato and Kenseth. Yeah, Kent's is much better this go round. Car looks like it's got some speed in it now. Matt? Mike, during that run, the previous run, Kenseth's car just went to the evil side. He said, I don't know what to tell you to try to fix it because it won't turn at all, and we've lost the forward on exit. He felt like he was a little too hard on that right rear earlier in the run and used up the good of the tires. That's very possible with this tire. 12th place, teammates. <laughs> Quite a battle going on here between the 88 and the 24. They've swapped that back and forth a couple of times. Looks like Jeff Gordon's going to drive away for the moment. Now, you, you know, when you look at the success of a team like that 51 team of Justin Algar, you have to remember who his crew chief is. Steve Addington. It's like adding a head coach that has had a winning record. Steve Addington's won races. He's won races here, so he knows uh, how to get a car set up for this racetrack. Now, Daryl and Mike, again, we continue to document Brad Keselowski and the two being down a cylinder. But right now that we're, we're into a run, his lap times are just as good as Kurt Busch in that 41 car that's leading this race. I just don't think you can use that much throttle here, and that's what helps him. No, it is, Larry. And, when, and as long as, like on that restart, he did a nice job of getting down and getting in line. And once he gets going, he's as good as anybody. You can watch his RPM right here, though. You can see he's down a little RPM on the straightaway. But I bet you in the corner, probably not any difference to him and the car leading the race right now. Now, behind our race leader, Kurt Busch, Carl Edwards has driven around the 51 of Justin Allgaier, so he is setting sail on the leader. Edwards trying to get back on the lead lap. Just over 100 laps to go with Michael Waltrip. Chris Byers live here in Richmond, Virginia. Glad you're watching NASCAR on Fox. And time for the Toyota race summary. And Kurt Busch, who has led the most laps, fifth straight race that he has led this season. But he has failed to win the last four races after he has led the most laps. And, of course, 
He is trying to win his first race of the year, the 41 car, holding off Allgaier and Kozlowski down a cylinder. But Jamie McMurray, Michael Waltrip currently running fourth, had made his move to the front, and now he's still within striking distance. Yeah, that car really impressed me in that long run, and no Richmond is notorious for long runs in the middle of the race. You can see McMurray here nipping on Kozlowski for that third spot. But Chris, the restart slates, those are what really concerned me for McMurray. We didn't see that speed like we saw out of Kurt Busch right after the restart. This is a long run car. If the cards play out for him where we don't have cautions late, he could be the, the guy. And he is in the third place position. We've only had five leaders and 10 different lead changes so far in this race. Again, Kurt Busch, who has led five different times, has led with the most laps. Meanwhile, it is the Toyota Owners 400. Denny Hamlin, the Xfinity win on Friday, had the neck pain last week. Let's check in with Jamie Little for more on the 11 car. Well, Chris, that's exactly right. Last week, it was the driver's problem with those neck spasm. This week, today, it's the race car. Has not had a good day. He started on the front row and hasn't seen the front since. He's just struggling with the handling. They've thrown everything at it, and it hasn't made a big difference. He's saying he can't put his foot on the throttle through the corner. That's a big problem. They went a different direction last round of stops, made an air pressure adjustment, but he still sits 23rd a lap down, Mike. Thanks, Jamie. Great battle here for fifth place. Six seconds back of the lead, Truex, Johnson, and Harvick. They've been going at it here pretty hot and heavy. Uh, Truex has got the position, but Jimmy Johnson's been looking hard down on the bottom. You see Harvick here getting a nice run up on the outside. But Mike, back to Denny Hamlin, one of the things that shocked me last week was that you would have a neck problem. Not, I know Bristol's hard on your neck, but when you think about it, you have a Hans device, a head and neck restraint system, the way the seats are built where you have a headrest just right up you can lay your head upon, that was the thing that surprised me about him last week. We heard radio chatter, something happened on lap 12, almost like he got a, a crick in his neck, something at that point. They worked on him during the four hour rain delay and could not improve it, hence the decision to step out of that car and Eric Jones hastily brought in. This is my favorite shot right here. You can really see how these guys are working, who's running where, who's got the advantage. You see the 48 close a little, then here comes the four close a little. It's that seesaw battle backs and forth. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, official tire of NASCAR. Chris? Well, Larry was talking about short run and long run speed. Short run speed, that's what the 48 car has. Jimmy Johnson saying first, about halfway through his run, he said the 48 is great, especially getting off the corner. But the second half of the run, that's where he's been having problems, saying the car just gets way too loose. So right now, it's all about attack. And Mike, you asked me before that last caution came out, could anyone make it? Well, you look at the fact that everyone pitted somewhere between lap 252 and 272. Everyone he will have to make at least one more stop. Now with 92 to go, though, the window's open. If a caution comes out, you could easily make it to the end. Now, Carl Edwards, we mentioned, had passed Justin Allgaier and set sail for the leader. Allgaier has repassed Edwards. So Carl right now not in a position to get his lap back unless we have a caution flag. He would be the free pass car. Carl was running on new tires. I mean that, 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 that car seemed like he was pretty happy when it had four tires on but they go off in a hurry. But they, I, I am really impressed with the run of that 51 car. Nice job today for that team. Let's go back to this fifth place battle and catch up with Kevin Harvick. Matt. Mike, the next time Kevin Harvick hits pit road, if he needs a track bar adjustment, the team will have to do it manually because the track bar adjuster inside the cockpit has broken. That's the only comment he's really made about the car this run. He's been very quiet, just trying to work his way back to the point. Probably burned it up, <laughs> running it up and down because he been all over the place. But yeah, it's adjusting the track bar on the right rear. The driver can actually raise it or lower it. Let's take a look here with an animation to kind of give you an idea of what Kevin Harvick could do up until a point. Track bar is in the rear of the car, but the switch is actually on the steering wheel. If you look right here, this is this is his radio button over there on the on the right. This is the track bar. He can adjust it up or down. This is what he's adjusted. The track bar actually holds the rear and in the center of the car, and you can raise it up to help the car to rotate, or you can lower it to help the forward bite off the corner. That's the good thing about the way this is designed. Even if the driver can't adjust it, the crew can still manually adjust it as we've done for years in the past. Yeah, and, and really, Larry, it's quite explanatory. If you raise it up, you go up, the car will turn better. You go down, the car will be tighter. 
Now here's Carl Edwards again repassing Justin Allgaier. Remember Edwards is a lap down but once clear of the second place car he's got a ways to go to try to catch uh, Kirk Bush and get get his lap back the hard way. Well then right behind him you see that black car there that's the one car Jamie McMurray he's a uh, sort of entered the picture here as well. Chris uh, Jamie Max coming back. Well Jamie Max so strong on that last run but since he's pitted he said he's given up some front grip in that car. Now his crew chief Matt McCall told him hey we've had a bunch more cloud cover in the last 15 minutes so it might be that on the last pit stop they'll probably make some adjustments trying to make that car quick again. Yeah, but remember that car really got better and better and better through the run. He didn't fall off as much as some of the other cars and it looks like it's doing that again in this run starting to improve his lap times. That's just what Justin Allgaier and his team were talking about. The need to save their tires. Well, I'd love to be running those flats all the time. I'm just going to kill the tires. Church running 20s. We're running 20s and 20s behind you. It's fine. Well, and, and Daryl, you know, it depends on what, how good your race car is, how, how hard you can run it and not burn the tires off. As now we're seeing Justin Allgaier lose the third spot to Brad Keselowski in the battle on the right hand side of the screen between Kenseth and Truex is a battle for seventh. Yeah when you're over when you're abusing the tires you can just feel them going away. You feel that car starting to slide more and more and more and that's when you know you got to back off or you're not going to have anything left. There's your leader Kurt Busch Matt Kenseth now up to seventh Matt Yoko. Mike it sounds like the track may have taken another swing to the tight side Matt Kenseth said the car is so tight through the center he's having to slow down so much to make it turn this should be a great fuel mileage segment of the race and the car behind him Martin Truex same exact problem way too tight through the center but Matt what I'm seeing some clouds have definitely rolled in we do not have a lot of sunlight on the track right now. 82 laps to race as the sun plays peekaboo with the clouds here in Richmond. Kurt Busch leading Jamie McMurray by four seconds.
75 laps to go in Richmond, where Sprint will cut your rate plan in half. Bring them your Verizon or AT&T bill and turn in your old phone at a Sprint retail store or Sprint.com slash half price. Kurt Busch has led more than half of this race. He's led five times. 218 laps. Joey Logano led 94. No one else has led more than 10. He has four seconds on Jamie McMurray. And look at the difference between all of last season and six races this year for Kurt Busch. Yeah, and, and Mike, we talked about how the, the track has changed. And here's a pretty good example. Jimmy Johnson now running fifth. Algar sixth. Kenseth recovers to be seventh. Jeff Gordon, who hadn't been good all day, is eighth. Logano, I mean, Dale Jr., those guys are all having pretty good runs here at the end of the day. These two drivers, they've been going at it for 30 laps, though, for this fourth position. Kevin Harvick are riding with him in the four, and Jimmy Johnson in that 48. Now, Larry, you said the fuel window opened quite some time ago. When do you start getting nervous about your fuel load? Well, and I go back to the last time we cycled in those green flag stops. Think about it. Brad Keselowski, Justin Algar, they rode the dice and stayed Number out three, there. Turn one. Let us know if you see it. But the penalty, which they didn't end up paying the penalty, is how much you would give up the fresh tires. That's going to be the chess match at the end, I think, should we stay green. Yeah, just heard them talking about it, debris in turn one. I, I don't see anything down there that's uh, visible from here. And that was from the four car. Apparently a discussion on the radio about that possibility. Well, there is, there is that couple of areas down there that they sort of put sealer in that people have complained about. I don't know if some of that may have come up. Still 70 laps to go. Our Fox cameramen haven't spotted any, anything down there. So we continue under green with 19 cars on the lead lap. There's a couple of areas you see those all right in there. Those were areas that had they put some sealer in. Uh, you see the six car just went over the top of that. And I was told when you hit that, it really upsets the car. And they were trying to either straddle it or stay below it. There's some of that uh, crack seal. That's some mean stuff right there. And you see those white lines that are now black. That's just rubber being put down. Believe it or not, those white lines until they get some rubber built up on they're a little they're on they're slick when you hit them. Now one driver that would be in the catbird seat as far as green flag pit stops then kind of wait and see what other drivers do would be Kurt Busch in the 41 car because of a three and a half second lead. He doesn't have to be the first one to commit to pit road. Right now all he needs is for this thing for nothing unusual to happen. If this thing plays out like it looks like it's going to that 41 might pick up his first win of the year. He's come close a couple times already. Today looks like there's a really good chance. Among sports, NASCAR is a leader in green initiative. They're inviting fans to measure their own environmental impact and receive trips, uh, tips on how to reduce your carbon footprint. You can go to NASCAR.com slash green or join the conversation using the hashtag NASCAR green. You know, Mike, Darrell, when I think about Kurt Busch in that 41 car, well documented, you know, he set out the first three races because he was suspended by NASCAR for sir, all the situation that was going on with his personal life. But with the 227 laps that he's led today, he's going to close in on leading 500 laps this year and missing the first three races. Of course, he came back with two top five finishes right off the, right off the bat. Oh, yeah, great run at Phoenix, great run at Fontana. And uh, that car has been fast ever since he got back in it. But I, I still, the guy that's got to hope there's no caution is the guy driving the two car. Because as long as he can run laps clear and no have to, nobody around him, he can run as fast as a leader almost. What he doesn't want is a restart because that would kill him with a engine being down a cylinder. So he doesn't need a late race caution. 63 laps to go, 19 cars on the lead lap, led by Kurt Busch, Jamie McMurray, and Brad Keselowski.
56 laps to go. Everybody chasing Kurt Busch. Jamie McMurray is 2.4 seconds back and closing slightly with 55 laps to go. Regardless of how this turns out, our five-hour energy big move of the race is this. That white 55 of Brett Moffitt slow with a cut tire. The caution might come out. So Kurt makes his move. Passes race leader Brad Keselowski, gets back on the lead lap, and there are the yellow lights for the caution flag. What a heads-up move to force the issue in case the caution came out. Yeah, and because they elected to stay out and everyone else pitted or either took the wave around, he went from that being almost a lap down to back on the lead lap to leading the race on the restart. Well, he's had the dominant car for sure, and uh, that was really a heads-up move, and he's just on his game today. All, everything, in the pits, this is the most laps Kurt has led in a race since the 2010 Coke 600, where Kurt led 252 laps and won. 53 laps to go. Three things you need to know, beginning with Chris. Mike, what a day for Jamie McMurray. He had that loose wheel on the competition caution. Had to come back to pit lane. Gave up so many positions. Dropped all the way back to 31st. Well, he charged back to the front. Took the lead on lap 262. Right now, he says he's got a great car, especially on the long run. Matt? Chris, what a week for Kevin Harvick. He visited the White House. He battled the flu. Qualified his front cup car fifth. Right now, he runs in the fifth position, battling somewhat of a tight race car. Remember, Harvick comes on strong here near the end in two of his three wins at Richmond. He didn't take the lead until two laps to go. Jamie? And young Chase Elliott making just his second career Sprint Cup Series race. The goal was to finish all the laps and stay on the lead lap. Well, he's doing that and more. Currently running 12th and battling his own teammates. He just passed Dale Earnhardt Jr. Remember Chase Elliott. Remember that name. He's the future taking over the 24 for Jeff Gordon next year, Mike. Yeah, he's on the verge of a top, top 10 finish here at Richmond, but a lot can happen in the 50 laps that remain. Now Martin True. Oh, caution is out for debris. Turn three. And Danica Patrick in the 10 car was just about to pull into her pits when that caution came out. They're going to see if they can actually make this stop and keep her in that position of just being the one lap down. Now A.J. Allmendinger was the first driver one lap down. He will get the free pass on this, the sixth caution flag of the race. 49 laps to go now. Yeah, she, she actually, it, it, my mistake on that, she's actually right now showing three laps down. She'll obviously take the wave around to get to two laps down in that 10 car. They'll keep the pits closed for one lap to gather up the field and then open it up for the 17 cars that are on the lead lap. Yeah, and I, I really believe this is going to be a detriment to the two car because even though he got a pretty good restart that last time, he was up near the front. If he gets back here in the field at all, that restart's going to be his Achilles heel with that engine the way it is. So it's Bush, McMurray, Keselowski, Johnson, and Harvick right now, the top five. And McMurray had been making small gains on Kurt Bush's lead. He's got a good long run car, and when we get the green flag, it'll still be a pretty good distance, 40 laps or so to the finish. If this is the last caution flag. Yeah, well, you know, once you get inside of uh, 50 laps like we are and you bunch these cars up and everybody's going for it, uh, I got a feeling we're going to have several cautions before this is over with. And again, I just think that's going to kill the two cars chances of getting a, a good finish. Pit road is open. Kurt Busch, Jamie McMurray lead them in, Chris. And Jimmy Johnson will be the first one to hit a pit box there. He said his car very good on the short run. He said, if anything, he needs the car to be a little bit better after about 30 laps getting off the corner. And then we've got the 41 and the one. Those two cars both very fast. Both drivers saying they'd like a little bit better takeoff speed. Jamie McMurray saying the car a little too tight. Kurt Busch saying it a little too loose. Jamie. And Brad Kozlowski doing a nice job hanging on down a cylinder. It's the restarts that hinder him. He wants to be a little bit freer for this final restart. Matt? Kevin Harvick's car took off well. Once things settled in, he was pretty pleased making up some headway. No changes on this stop. He's away. Here's your advanced auto part race off pit road. Kurt Busch will retain the lead. Jamie McMurray second. Jimmy Johnson gains a spot. Brad Kozlowski loses one. Jeff Gordon gains two spots and not a good stop for Justin Allgaier. 
And I believe that 48 car, Jimmy Johnson, he's going to be a player now here. Oh, yeah. With this restart with just over 40 laps to go. They keep gaining him spots on pit road. Yeah, they got that first pit in down there, and it's really paying off for him. He gets into his box, and he's out there way ahead of everybody else. Now, just uh, Almondinger will join the cars on the lead lap when we restart. Well, we go from our short track series to the fastest track on earth next week. Next Sunday, NASCAR descends on Talladega for 500 miles of action-packed racing. It's the fastest and most dangerous track in NASCAR. And if you survive, it could be the sweetest victory you'll ever taste. Find out who can conquer this super speedway next Sunday, only on Fox. Big weekend of NASCAR racing from Talladega, Alabama. Rapid fire qualifying next week. I think that'll be fun. I think that'll be a lot better than what we saw at Daytona uh, and what we've seen everywhere at Daytona and Talladega, that rapid fire, one's on the track. Here comes another one, just keep them coming. I agree, Darrell, and that will eliminate the chance of someone else aiding or abetting uh, your qualifying lap. Yeah, it just doesn't, it just, to me, it just doesn't work at Daytona and Talladega. The draft and everything is too dangerous. This is a whole lot better and it'll be fast too. For a little more on Talladega, Chris Myers. And Mike, the guy that usually sits next to me on the uh, pre-race show, Michael Waltrip is going to be jumping in the 55 car, replacing Brett Moffitt at uh, Talladega. Super Speedway that you just talked about that you'll see. Now, after Talladega, speculation David Reagan will take over the 55. If true, it would be the third different team for him this year, since Reagan would be vacating the 18 car. Replacing Kyle Busch, Eric Jones would be at the wheel until Kyle Busch returns. Nothing's official here, but there are details to be worked out. Yeah, and I just love racing at Talladega. So uh, one detail I know is I'm going to get behind the wheel of the number 55 Aaron's Dream Machine and be in a car capable of winning a race. And at my advanced age, Chris, that's quite an honor. <laughs> well, it'll be interesting to get your perspective from behind the wheel in the race. Uh, real quick, your observation here with just... 45 laps to go. I mean, how do you how do you say someone's going to beat Kurt Busch? He's been dominant in the second half of this race, but Jamie McMurray's really fast. We talked about Jimmy Johnson early in the day having a late running race car, a fast car late in the race. He's in a position to jump on him right now. All right, let's go back upstairs to Daryl, Larry, and Mike. Thanks, Chris. Jeff Gordon jumped a couple of spots on that stop to six. Looks like Johnson, though, made the biggest move and put himself in a position to contend for this win. I like this reset. I mean, this is almost like the start of the race. Uh, you know, you got the 41 car who's dominated all day. You got Jimmy Johnson who finally got up there in third. Harvick's in fifth. Uh, you know, and here's Kenseth. He was up there early. Logano's back up to eighth. The players early in the race have come to the front again. Out in front of the pack. Boy, it looks different. The uh, new Toyota Mirai pace car powered by a hydrogen fuel cell that develops 153 horsepower. Toyota leaving the future of driving today and tomorrow. Chad Knaus with a pep talk for his driver. All right, man, let's get a deep breath. Give those belts a tug. Time to start chewing on that steering wheel, buddy. We've got 43 laps to go when you take the flag here. Well, that's one thing about Jimmy Johnson, Chad Knaus. I, I go back to last week and they finished second. He said he didn't even think with a car that wasn't bent that they could even finish no. that high, and the car was beat to, de to pieces. Yeah, and, but, and, you know, I love it. Even as much with 72 wins, six championships, you still need to pump up that driver. Who's in, the better, on, buddy. who's in the better spot, Daryl? Johnson in third or McMurray outside the front row? Well, I don't know. I think if McMurray could get down in front of Johnson, he'll be okay, but he could get hung up on that outside if he's not careful. Green flag, 42 to go. Jeff Gordon in that 24, he's trying to shoot the gap. Brad Kozlowski, the two, just can't go on fresh tires being down a cylinder. Oh, that's going to that's gonna get him in trouble, that uh, not, not being able to take off. Three wide into the corner. Truex inside of Larson. And, whoa, way up to the outside goes the 51. He paid the price on that one. Allgaier to With the back. A lot of oh, contact. trouble. Around oh, goes just, Tony Stewart. Turn one. I think he just, I think he made contact with Dale Jr. and cut a tire down. Caution. Tony Stewart spun coming down the curving front straightaway. 
There's a little damage on the right front of Junior's car. There was a lot of shaking and baking going on in there. I'm not sure who got into who, but uh, there was definitely contact, and I think that's what happened to Stewart. I think we'll see he might have a tire cut down. They're back in here. Yeah, right back back here is the 88. And, the, and you see right there they make contact. Actually, I think Tony might have gotten into Dale Jr., and uh, that's what cut the tire down. Watch how close he comes to catching that wall right there. Yikes. Oh, wow. He may have just skimmed it, but I'm telling you, he was headed for it in a hurry. Too close. They were just coming down the front straightaway here, and we've seen it time and time again. They've made it all day long, but uh, you might this time it just didn't quite have enough room. And right there, almost like they zigged and zagged. Boy, as he spun, his right rear almost gathered Dale Earnhardt Jr. in 88 with him. Look at these guys. Uh, everybody scatters and only one car incident. Hard to believe. You know, sometimes I hate it when you're right. <laughs> About cautions, <laughs> breeding cautions. Oh, yeah. Well, you know at the end of this race. That may be why it won't run. He may just have to try to keep RPM in it and see if he can't limp it around here. Stewart's going to lose another lap here. He's already got the wind in it down. Uh, apparently, he's, it won't crank or pretty serious damage. I'm not sure what the problem is. Let's ride with Denny Hamlin. Two out to 25. Two back, two out to back, bottom of three. Bottom of three. Bottom of three. Watch it 14. Watch it, watch out back, 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 back. Clear not. Watch your outside one. Darrell, Tony's car never looked like it was really in the racetrack. The yeah. car was just sliding around a little loosey-goosey all the way down yeah, there. We right call there. it a straightaway, but it's not. Yeah, he made serious contact with the 88 right there. And I think... Man, I don't know. I can't tell. Right in front of Chase Elliott in that 25. See Denny Hamlin. We rode with him a while ago. He's having to check up. Paul Menard behind him. Casey Mears locks it up behind him. Just kissed the wall coming by. Brushed it. <coughs> hmm. Stewart's going to climb out. Apparently the car would not restart for him. This is where he got his very first career Sprint Cup Series win as a rookie back in 1999. As Matt told us at the top of the show, it's his favorite racetrack. Not today. Well, we listened in on Dale Jr. and company. Tell the 51, I had two guys underneath me. I was trying to stay low for that 51 and the 14 must have. Got no left rear somehow. Yeah, Allgaier was just caught up on the outside with a whole lot of company coming. Yeah, it's real congested right here. You see Allgaier in the 51. He, inside, Dale Jr. tries to get him between them. One inside to 78, one inside on the line. Still so one inside on the line in the middle. In the middle, clear high, one inside. Pumphrey's on your tight, on your tight, Ford. He's like, keep coming, keep coming. You saw the little wiggle keep there coming, where man. he and Stewart got together. Oh. Tony Stewart's car hauled back to the garage area. Well, the pits yeah. are open right now. Of course, we only ran about a half a lap. All of the front leaders will stay out. Paul Menard got the free pass to 27. He should come get four fresh tires. Ooh. Just not sure about the damage of that left rear tire on Dale Earnhardt Jr. Well, you can, Larry, you can see all the rubber that's uh, being accumulated there. I'm not sure if that's from Stewart's car or from that tire, but definitely uh, something's pretty close right there. Now pit road is open and the first taker is going to be Ricky Stenhouse followed by Sam Hornish, uh, Casey Mears who locked up the left front, Ryan Newman, A.J. Allmendinger and others coming pit side. We'll go side by side with 36 to go.
Getting ready for the restart, it'll be 33 to go. Matt Yoakum heard Tony Stewart say that the car restarted fine, but every time he went to let the clutch out to move it, it would stall. So they towed it to the garage and were set for the restart. 18 lead lap cars led by Kurt Busch and Jamie McMurray. Here they go into turn one. Logano way down below the yellow line. Now that was, oh. a, that was a restart right there. I mean, it ran him all the way. Really, Ran Joy Logano all the way out of racetrack, but he kept on digging. And he gained a couple of spots by making it work. Yeah, but he might lose one if he's not careful. Caution is out. Got last it. year, we had three right. caution lag flags in the last 50 laps. Now, that's Jeb Here. Burton. J.J. Yaley qualified that car. Uh, Burton's own car failed to make the show, but he started the race in this number 23. So... Let's have a look at the restart and see what happened. Want to see some block? Want to see some blocking? Oh yeah. Let me show you what blocking looks like. 22. Here he comes. He's got a run on Jeff Gordon. Run him out of room. Run him out of room. Run him out of room. And finally had to let him go. It's kind of one of those. You play a little chicken right there. Do I force him? Force him? Force him? I guess I got to let him go. Uh oh, and Jeff Burton going around for like off the bumper off the, the bumper of that blue car again. This time it was Sam Hornish uh, who got in the back of the 23. Top of your screen. Danica Patrick had to avoid another one. Another one. Apparently, just it seems today, if you got a yellow bumper on your car, you're a target. <laughs> Hit me here. Does it say that back there somewhere? I'm not sure. All right. Uh, let's get some audio from Joey Logano's team, our pole sitter, about that restart. Well, I don't know if that was as close as you guys thought it was. That's huh? pretty close. <laughs> Copy that. Nice move. D5. Again, I, this is it, it, there's nothing wrong here. Jeff Gordon's not doing anything wrong. He's trying to protect his position, and he does run Joey all the way down on the apron, but then he gives him room when we get to the corner to let him get up in the track. And unlike at Talladega next week where yellow line is out of bounds, anything everywhere you want to go, it, it's free game. And the advantage of that move for Logano is he'll restart on the inside. He's fifth place with Gordon sixth. I guess it's safe to say, Larry, as long as it's black, it's safe. Keselowski, Allgaier uh, make pit stops among the lead lap cars. Burton is in along with Hornish I feel and Edwards, who is the free pass car. I feel really bad for Brad because I knew these these last few restarts were going to be what would do him in with that problem he's having. Tony Stewart checked and released at the infield care center, declined to comment on what put his car into the garage. Now Wednesday on the Ultimate Fighter, after a devastating loss, the coach's feud boils over and the house erupts. Sounds like short track racing. <laughs> when the fighters hit the cage, one big mistake will cost one team everything. So don't miss an all new episode of the Ultimate Fighter, Wednesday at 10 Eastern and Pacific, only on Fox Sports 1. Chris Myers. Thanks very much. Let's go back to early when Danica Patrick had a close call. You saw moments ago she had another close call, but this one Jimmy Johnson was involved in. Yeah, Jimmy tried to get on the brakes, gets into the back of Trevor Bain, has to come to pit road for repairs. Joey Logano led the first 94 laps of this race. The pole sitter Kurt Busch then taking the lead. He has led the most laps overall by far in this race, more than 260. And then, of course, this mishap. Joey Gase around. Somebody getting a little bit impatient, Chris, and that's going to keep happening the later it gets in the race. You can see Clint Boyer here getting into the back of Danica Patrick on pit road, causing some damage to that car. Brad Kozlowski had the cylinder down, well documented by Darrell Waltrip, hung in there as long as he could, but when the caution flags came out, pretty much put the winner of the last Richmond race in trouble, and uh, Tony Stewart very upset here. Darrell Earnhardt Jr. and him in a wreck, and declined comment. His worst start of his career continues as we head back upstairs. Thanks, Chris. 27 laps to go when they come around and the 
Toyota Mirai pace car hits pit road and will be back under green. We've had three cautions already since lap 350. That was 50 to go. As many as we had last year. Yeah, forget and those waving long off greens. the restart. Forget the long greens. Now it's uh, how long before we have another caution. But what also goes along with having these cautions, we just keep adding drivers back to the lead lap, and we'll end up with half the field on the lead lap. Now back to the last restart, you saw Jeff Gordon run Joey Logano down the racetrack. Here's what the 24 said. Did he lay back like six car lengths, Eddie, or what? what's the deal there? No, he didn't lay back. He just drove to the apron right away. Uh, Al, what happened is the 41 didn't take off. Everybody tried to anticipate it and just dominoed a little bit. I certainly question if he was there before the start finish line, but other than that, we can pretty much answer that question. Yeah. He did everything right, but yeah. he did time it perfect. Remember, the start finish line is really closer to turn four than it is down in the middle of the straightaway, so he was well past the start finish line. Let's try it again with 26 laps to go. Jamie McMurray trying to wrest the lead from Kurt Busch. We're back under green. McMurray takes a wide arc into turn number one. Ooh, ooh, I don't know if that was a good idea. He got out there a little wide, but he's able to hang on to it. Yeah, he got by with it. He's going to fall back in the second with that one car behind Kurt. And nobody dive bombed the bottom in turn one that time. Kevin Harvick secures third from Jimmy Johnson. Then Gordon fifth, Logano sixth. Side by side for seventh, Casey Kane and Matt Kenseth. Boy, they've uh, put some life back in that four car. He's up there now. Kevin Harvick trying to get around Jamie McMurray. Truex and Boyer also side by side. Two by two by two from fifth on back. Yeah, they're, they're three wide back here in the back of the pack, but now Jeff Gordon, that 24, trying to battle back against Joe Logano in the 22 to get back in the top five. Logano's going to make that outside work, I believe. He's got the momentum off of turn Ooh. two. Yeah, he makes the pass on the outside. Nice run there by the 22 car. Justin Allgaier went way up the hill in one and two and dropping way back. We're told he is suffering from stomach cramps. With 23 to go, and he hope he can hold on and soldier on and finish this race on the lead lap. Hey, I thought that 48 car might have something for the 41 and the one, but uh, right now he's got his hands full just holding off Joy Logano. I think Jamie McMurray's best chance to beat Kurt Busch, and they had identical laps that time, is for this race to go green to the checker because McMurray's car seems better the longer it runs. I just don't think anybody's got anything for that 41 today. He is uh, he's one of those dominant cars that everything has gone his way. Everything's gone right. That car is perfect. Yeah, the biggest thing, Kurt Busch, Tony Gibson, the 41 team, they want to see this thing run out green because if we run a few laps here, that will be a huge chess match who pits, who stays out. We know that's what beat them last week at Bristol by making that pit stop. Yeah, that was, I'm not sure that was the right call. It turned out not to be for sure. It's been a year since he visited Victory Lane. 35 starts. How about that second place car, Chris? Can he catch Bush? Well, right now it doesn't look that way. That car, the one car, Jamie McMurray's car, he said it all day long has been so good off the corner. Well, that's the place right now where Kurt Bush has beaten him. Better not look back. That's all I can tell him because that four card, Kevin Harvick is breathing down his neck. And that's what's been impressive about Kurt Busch in that 41. We talked about comers and goers. His car was good when the track was green. It's good when it's rubbered up. Short run, long run has not mattered. Remember, though, Harvick is notorious for doing what, Mike? Being the closer. And here he comes. And here he comes. But he's going to need to cle clear Jimmy McMurray pretty quick in that one. Looks like he's going to do it possibly up off turn two. And, he, you know, I, I think the you think the races that he's won, other than most last year particularly, didn't really worry about him until the very end of the race. And it looks like it's working for him today. Casey Kane passes Jeff Gordon. That's for sixth place. Yeah, I've been watching Jeff Gordon. Jeff cannot get up off the corner. His car is real loose. And now he's under fire from Matt Kenseth into 20. 16 to go this time. 
You know, a Kevin Harvick second place would not be the worst thing for Stuart Haas Racing. <laughs> Harvick has wins. He's in the chase. His teammate, Kurt, Kurt Busch, does not. And a win here would likely secure a spot in the chase for Kurt. I'd say that's on everybody's mind, but Kevin Harvick. I was going to say, <laughs> you can tell anybody you want to that, but it okay. doesn't matter to Kevin Harvick. If he can pass him, he's going to pass him. I understand. Yeah, you, you got to earn it, dude. <laughs> If I'm better than you are, you're going to really have to really earn it. Matt Kenseth closing, and here's Brad Kozlowski. He's dropped back to 17th, dropped a cylinder early in the race. On the long runs, the car is able to keep up just fine. But right now, uh, his lap time's about half a second off what the leaders are turning. And yes, Kevin Harvick is closing. His last lap was half a tenth better than Kurt Busch, who now has a 1.2 second lead, which may not be enough with just 14 laps to no, go. And, and you know, Ke you know that Kurt Busch, he's just kind of mirror driving right now. He wants to keep Kevin at bay. Uh, I don't think he's running 100 percent, probably more like 95, saving a little something in case he needs it. Seventh place for Matt Kenseth. Coming off that win at Bristol. They were not good in the mid portion of this race, but they've rebounded. He is the leading Toyota with 12 laps to go. Yeah, for early in the race, you know, he's run up here in the top two or three for the early part of the race. Then he fell back, but uh, nice recovery. Harvick, that last lap took another five one hundredths or half a tenth of a second out of Kurt Busch's lead. Yeah, and Kurt has a pretty clean racetrack in front of him for about a straightaway. He may catch the tail end of the field now that we have 11 to go, but it's pretty clean right now. Well, I know one thing. If I was Kurt Busch, the last guy I'd want breathing down my neck is Kevin Harvick. There's the dynamic interval inside that track diagram. And generally, it's shrinking. Kurt Busch has now led the most laps in his career in one race. And there are your teammate crew chiefs. One of whom may win this. What a dominant day though for that 41 car and, and, and this Stuart Haas team in general. I mean you got to admit these two guys the four and a 41 this year. They've they've had a couple of three races where they just dominate. And Mike, we've said it many times. You saw Tony Gibson with three races to go the end of last year. They swapped him and Daniel Canost between the four, 41 and the 10. And I think we all said immediately, Tony Gibson is exactly the crew chief that Kurt Busch needs. Old school, but does a great job of keeping up with new technology. Call him the old man. Or does he call everybody the old man? He calls everybody the old man. <laughs> Looks pretty calm right now. Not too worried, I don't think. Well, last week he passed that kidney stone, and this week his drivers passed everybody. Everybody. Good point. Fifth place. Seven Casey Kane. Joey Logano for fifth. Trying that outside. There's a little bit of speed out there, but I'm not sure there's enough to make that pass. Here's some audio from Kurt Busch's team. Whatever change you made was good for short run speed, but it's getting tight quick. Ten more, Roger. Remember your tools there. So, right now, I wouldn't touch anything. No. <laughs> just, just drive. Work your hands. Now this track is a three quarter mile. It used to be a half mile paved and before that a half mile dirt. NASCAR has raced here since 1953 and has never ever had a last lap pass for the win at this racetrack. Chase Elliott nice job today in his second cup start running 16th behind Paul Menard. Kirk moves underneath Jeff Green. No problem. Pulls down on Jeb Burton nice as we get into the final five laps. Yeah, they talk about work your tools. Two best tools you got right now are those hands. Work those. Kevin Harvick working the throttle. Yeah. Kurt got through that uh, by those two cars, Jeb uh, Burton and the 30 car of green. He got by those guys real easy and not quite as easy for Kevin Harvick here as he's having to work by a little harder. 
Yeah, we've got four to go now. Not sure if Kurt's going to catch those other drivers that are up there. About a half a straightaway in front of him. I don't think he'll get to him as we're down now to three laps to go. No, he's got a nice clean track. I think he's going to be just fine, Larry. I don't think he's going to catch up with these last, these back markers here. He's got a second in the bank with two laps to go. Now he's holding his breath. Can we just let us get back to the back to the start finish line one more time? Let me see that white flag. Get waving. that white flag in the air, and I'm in the last lap. You can do what you want to. What an awesome day for that team. Clear track ahead is white flag right here. White flag, one more good one. Kurt Busch leads his 290th lap of this race. Kevin Harvick within one second. Cuts it down to nine tenths in the back straightaway. Traffic too hard, too far ahead to be a factor. And for Gene Haas, Kurt Busch has his 26 Sprint Cup win. Nice job, everybody. That 41 car ran like one of those Haas CNC machines today, flawless. Great job, Hossmeyer. Everybody, everybody, this is a team win. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate it, everybody. It's unbelievable. He started the season under suspension for a suspected, a suspected domestic violence issue, a decision by a Delaware family court when the state's attorney general declined to press charges after being on suspension for three weeks, NASCAR reinstated Bush from suspension to redemption to victory lane. This is when the tears flow. Got to shed a few tears, I bet you, after what he's been through. Sunoco fueling victories. As Kurt Busch becomes the seventh driver to win in 2015, it'll be his second trip to victory lane at Richmond International Raceway and his ninth short track victory. He led 291 laps, the most he's ever led in one race. And he's going to burn down the house. He's going to be down a cylinder if he keeps this up. <laughs> Doesn't matter, but. <laughs> I think I'd be willing to bet this is probably one of the more special wins in Kurt Busch's career. Oh, yeah, for sure. Kurt Busch is headed for victory lane at Richmond. Gene Haas believed in Kurt Busch, and Kurt Busch returns to the wheel of the 41, picks up a victory. Congratulations from Kevin Harvick on the cool down lap. 
Harvick now with Matt Yoakum. Impressive one two finish for Stewart Haas Racing. So what did you need Kevin on that final run of the finish so that way you could pass your teammate? Uh, what we really needed was just a, all the tires to be the same. We put that one set of tires on and went back to 12th or 13th and, and wound up uh, making up the spots but you know it was just got us way behind so um, track bar broke and, and we weren't able to uh, to get the track bar back where it needed to but all in all just really happy for everybody at Stuart Haas Racing and Kurt and everybody on the 41 and everybody on our Jimmy John's Budweiser team here on the four car have done a great job and made up a, a lot of ground after we after we lost it and, and were able to, to get back up and at least have a chance there at the end. A great stretch coming up for Harvick he's won at each of the next three racetracks. Great day for Harvick in second. Jimmy Johnson finished third as Clint Boyer and Martin Truex, former teammates who raced each other hard to the finish, talking it over. Boyer finished ninth and Truex tenth. Another top ten for uh, the Cole Pern led 78 team. Yeah, new streak starting yes. for them. But I think across the board, one of the better days for Clint Boyer in that 15 team. Let him out. Jimmy Johnson third, Jamie McMurray fourth. Joey Logano completed the top five. Here's Chris Neville in victory lane. Really good well, Mike, so often we hear drivers say, as long as we have speed each and every weekend, the wins will come. And Kurt Busch and the 41 team, they have had speed since Phoenix. Kurt, what a dominant day. With everything you've been through this year, what does this win mean? Well, it's an incredible feeling. I mean, it's a total team effort. And the way that everything came together, it just seemed like we were building and building and building towards a great finish like this. And, and I have this opportunity because of Gene Haas. And everybody that's part of our family at Stuart Haas, it's, um, it's an unbelievable feeling when you pull deep from within, you go through troubles, and you know, when you're accused of something and things go sideways, your personal life doesn't need to affect your business life. And I'm here in Victory Lane. It feels great to do it here at Richmond, to do it with Haas Automation, Chevrolet, Monster Energy, Mobile One, Rush Truck Centers, everybody that's part of our family, all these guys back here. But Tony Gibson is an amazing crew chief, and I'm glad I've got the chance to work with him. So thanks, Tony, Gene Haas, everybody, Stuart Haas Racing, Hendrick Horsepower, Chassis, we, we got it done today. The car is pretty good. Well, it's an emotional win. Kurt Busch gets his second at Richmond. Matt? <laughs> A great day for the Hendrick engine and chassis department building the top three cars. And how would you describe your day, Jimmy? A lot of comers and goers today. Yeah, we, we had a great race car and we really felt like um, that was the case on Friday, except for a qualifying lap. So uh, I don't know what happened Friday. And in general, I'm not the best qualifier. So Friday, is, we, we've got to get those better in order to, to really win um, as often as we would like to. You know, we've got two wins and well, we're making the most out of these poor starts and poor pit road picks. But um, we, we've got to get better on Fridays. So I, I really think our race car worked hard to make it last in the long run. And, and with all the long runs that we had, I was able to get through the field and get this Lowe's Pro Services Chevy up front. Uh, those last few restarts, I was able to hang on and, and, and duke it out with those guys and uh, get a nice top three finish. Johnson third. Chris? Thanks for Kurt Busch. He's won with five different crew chiefs, now make it six. His first career win with Tony Gibson and celebrating here in Richmond. Why is Dale Earnhardt Jr. so upset with Tony Stewart? Well, you'll hear it in his words in just a moment.
A landmark win for 36-year-old Kurt Busch. Those three races suspended. He hoped, but he didn't know if he'd ever be able to race again, let alone win again. But the confidence of his race team, his owner, and the Kurt Busch fans. And finally, in victory lane, he had the most laps led coming in of any driver who had not yet won a race, but he took care of that today. And we'll see Kurt Busch in the chase. Tony Stewart coming off his best finish of the season. But off to the worst start in any career year, it mixes it up here with Dale Earnhardt Jr. Yeah, you can see Jr. clears the 51 car, and when he does, he doesn't run against the wall. I think Tony kind of expected Jr. to be up higher. They made contact, but that's short track racing, man. You're going to have that. Tony Stewart declined coming afterward. He was okay. Here's Jimmy Little. Well, Dale Earnhardt Jr. brings it home 14th, and it seemed like your car was really good on the long runs, Jr., especially the middle of the race. But you end up getting together with the 14. What exactly happened there? I don't know. You have to ask him. Um, he hit me in the left rear quarter panel. I was trying to clear the 51 on the outside of me, so I was as high as I could go. Just had to ask him. Thanks, Junior. Yeah. And we attempted to ask him, but again, no comment. Michael Walter, Chris Myers, so thanks for hanging around Sunday after the rain out Saturday. Kind of a, an unusual race, but Kurt Busch, who didn't really have his first lead till lap 95, had to lead six different times, then dominated the race. You know, we heard Kevin Harvick talking about a set of tires that didn't match his car properly, and he fell back. We saw a lot of guys really charge to the front. Casey Kane comes to mind, and they had inconsistent parts of the race. Kurt Busch, no inconsistency. He got to the front and he stayed there. A very dominant car, and that car stayed under him all day. Nine races in, quarter mark of the season, and of the nine, Kevin Harvick, seven of those, he's finished first or second. We know that he already has two wins. He was right there with his teammate. Let's go back upstairs for some final thoughts. Well, I still go back to that moment in the race when Brett Moffat was limping around and Kurt Busch dive-bombed Brad Keselowski. It was a desperate pass just before the caution came out. Put him in position to win. It really did. But when you have a car that dominant like they had today, the 41 car, the only thing that can beat you is yourself. And they didn't do that. They had great calls in the pit. Uh, the crew chief did a great job. The team did a great job. Kurt drove flawlessly. Perfect day. Yeah, it was a day of comers and goers, like Joey Logano, who sat on the pole and led a number of laps and then faded. But it just seemed like Kurt Busch and Tony Gibbs and that 41 team, they were good when the track was green at the beginning, a lot of rubber thin, short run, long runs. It did not seem to matter with that 41 car. Now he led three quarters of all the laps today. Dominating performance, Chris. A third away to, uh, from the chase, and the, these are the guys that are in. Chase, what matters? These are the standings. You win, you're in. That's the theory. Seventh different winner. So, Michael, there are really now just what nine spots available the rest of the way to get into NASCAR's playoffs. Yeah, and we saw last year you needed a win to get in. Uh, Ryan Newman snuck in late in the going, but uh, <laughs> you better get that victory. And we're going to a place next week, Chris, where all bets are off. There's a lot of cars that can win at Talladega, but you better get a win to be a chase guy. Jamie Logano, uh, Joey Logano, I should say, has a win, dominated early. He's standing by with Jamie Little. Well, Joey Logano leads 94 laps, brings it home top five. Seemed like the car to beat there for a while. Joey, where did things just kind of change in that 41 get away from you? Um, well, we had a, a decent car just take off in the, in the beginning of the race, but we just weren't very good from lap 12 to lap 60 or 70 in a run. It wasn't until late late in a run before our, uh, our Shell Penzo Ford started gaining some speed back to the field, but we could never make up what we lost in the middle of the run. So uh, had some fun on the, the, at the end of the race, got some good restarts and made up some spots. And uh, we had great pit stops, great pit stall, which, which kept us up towards the front all day. And uh, we rallied for a top five out of the whole thing. So um, that was good. Just got to uh, figure out um, how to be a little bit better in the middle part of the run when we come back. Joey Logano, second in points. Another great run by Jimmy McMurray in the one car. So when you look back on this day, where the segment of the race do you feel like your car really came on? Well, our Energizer uh, Eco Advance Chevy was just good on the long run. You know, it uh, it wouldn't take off real quick, but after 30 laps, it was about the same as the leaders. And then it was so much fun at the end to be that much quicker than those guys. It reminded me of, of kind of the old Darlington or old Rockingham when somebody would take off and then there would be the guy that couldn't go that would come at the end. So it was, it was a lot of fun to get to be that guy that had the speed at the end. Um, Kurt's car, it just, it just took off so much faster than ours, but really, uh, really proud of our guys. We had a little bit of a hiccup in the pits at the beginning, and those guys did a good job of kind of brushing that off and, and giving me good pit stops towards the end. So really, uh, really proud of our crew. We've run, run so good this year, and it uh, feels really nice. Thank you, Jamie. Second career Sprint Cup Series race. The goal was just to finish all the laps, what your crew chief told me, and to finish maybe top 20, and you finished 16. What did you take away from today? I felt like we had a, had a really solid day overall. I was, uh, 
I was a little disappointed there at the end that, that I fell back and, and could get going on the restart. But overall, um, everybody on, on our Napa team did, did great this weekend. I thought we had a fast car, especially in race trim. Uh, guys made good adjustments to qualify where we did and um, had a great car in the long run. I mean, we could, we could really, really run well and run some guys down late into a run. Unfortunately, it always comes down to the short runs of these things. So we'll, uh, we'll try to get better and, and hopefully, uh, you know, try to have a better effort at Charlotte. We'll see Chase Elliott back in a cup car in one month from now. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, Jeff Gordon to the future. He won't be running in Talladega, May, Charlotte, uh, but certainly his performance based on what he went through at Martinsville. <laughs> yeah, he left Martinsville thinking, what is this cup stuff all about? It wasn't any fun at all. He comes here. He talked about that good long run car. There was a point in the race. He was the fastest car on the track, drove all the way up to the top 10. He proved himself and his team today. I can run with these boys. I can beat them because I was faster than they were today. Uh, you'll be running with the boys uh, next yeah, Sunday I, at Talladega. I'm going to mix it up with those guys, too. I can't wait. I uh, love it out there. Uh, we always like to see you in a fire suit. Uh, 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 well, thank yeah, you. Because uh, that means you're not in here for all the afternoon. I kid. You know that. Kurt Busch all smiles today. We'll wrap up Richmond in just a moment. Kurt Busch led 291 laps, the most he's led in any race in his entire career, a past champion who has come back after a tumultuous start to his NASCAR season, winning for Stuart Haas racing with Kevin Harvick right behind him. Jimmy Johnson, again, winds up third, already a two-time winner this year. But now we go to Talladega. It has been the best track for Kurt Busch. Uh, last year, Denny Hamlin won, battling at the end there with Kevin Harvick. You know what I love about Talladega? You never know what you're going to get. It's like a box of chocolates, and these guys <laughs> are going to be all over each other. We saw David Reagan and David Gillen win the race a couple of years, teamed up together. So what you want to do is position yourself toward the front, late in the goal. Going. You'll see guys, some of them will lay back. But I think the key to winning at Talladega is you got to press, Chris. You better be up front because it's too hard to pass 20 cars to win this race. But you get at the front of the pack, maybe you can block and hold them off. That's exactly what Denny Hamlin did a year ago. Yeah, longest track on the circuit. So different after the first back-to-back -back short track races in the five years. Didn't produce a lot of fireworks a little bit there with Dale Earnhardt Jr. and uh, Tony Stewart. Tonight on Fox, it starts with the Simpsons all the way to Family Guy and then the last man on earth. And next Sunday, we mentioned Talladega. Note the time there. It's a big track. It's a long race. It's exciting. 11.30 Eastern Time, 8.30 Pacific. Race day begins on Fox Sports 1. And then NASCAR on Fox with Michael Darrell and I on the pre-race show. And we will go from there. The lead changed 12 times. Five different leaders. In the end, it was Kurt Busch with his first victory of the year. It's been a trying week for all of us here emotionally remembering Steve Burns and his contribution to the sport. We thank you for yours and for watching NASCAR on Fox. his 26th Sprint Cup win. 
This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.